page wanted to purchase and use. Yeah, not good. I'm, I'm Doc. Good hey, Doc. Nice to meet you. Yeah, how are you I'm sorry, Brian. I'm sorry. Oh, I thought you knew Doc. Sorry, Drew. Uh, I don't think I've met Tom before. You, you're part of the show, or you're uh, yeah, you're one of us? He's one okay. of our deputies. He's not a car guy. All right. He probably. Uh, he just wandered in one day, and he can't get rid of him. Man, I have a client that um, buyer's remorse, and then the guy lost his job, and then he started <laughs> screaming at me. You, you didn't fix my car right. You got to refund me. He Buyer's can't. remorse for you or the car? For the for my work, yeah. Why? Yeah. After I worked on it, his tailpipe rusted and snapped. And but then, it had nothing to do with you. No, nothing. To, I didn't make the rust. I don't make rust, you know? <laughs> no, what I mean is... But he wanted he, he wanted me to process. refund all the work. But yeah. I don't understand. The, how did he connect that together? He just lost his job. And he oh. was he was, you know, one day he's apologizing to me for getting angry and yelling... And then the next day, he's back to talking about his lawyer. Yeah. And, yeah, and that's, yeah, the poor guy is probably really stressed. Yeah. yeah. So we'll get Peter on. And Tom, batteries plus finally refunded the money to that old lady. I don't remember the issue, so you'll tell me on the air and I'll yeah. look it up. I texted him. Oh, did you mute it? Did you mute yours? Did you mute your radio? Oh, yeah, After I heard it go off. Hey, morons. Got to say hello to my morons. So, that Biden did okay last night with his cognitive and everything. He didn't like get completely lost. It's just an angry speech. If I don't get anybody, I might just wait till I do. It's not a big deal. We're on right now. Can we call you back? I'll call you. Okay, we'll call you. Bye. Hi. Hi, Tom Martino. 
Uh, welcome to the show. We are here to help you solve problems, answer questions, take complaints, and make your life a little easier. It's car day today. And uh, I'm going to talk about cars mostly, but somewhere along the line, I'm going to take a few comments here and there on something else. Because, I look, whenever we have a presidential election, it's from... It's a, it's a national importance. So now and then we talk about this because it does affect our lives. In fact, these guys here, with our car guys say, inflation has a massive effect. Car prices have a massive effect. Everything has a massive effect. Politics affect their business. Mm-hmm. Kevin, you no, said absolutely. that, Tom. Yeah. Tom, why is inflation helping the car business? That's an interesting question, Tom. Um, prices, I mean, but obviously prices go up. Obviously, also costs go up, right? So it's, yeah, it's that's a what I'm saying. So it's, sword, without yeah. a doubt. Yeah. But but are you saying are people? And I don't mean you're you're hiking prices on purpose. Mm-hmm. But are people expecting higher prices? Is it easier to get a higher price approved? I want to. I want the no, truth. No, absolutely. It is. No, isn't it, it is. Yeah. Because There's very people, few people question the price. That's what I'm getting at. Tom, would you agree to that? Yeah, I, I think that. People expect that things are more expensive now. And so, you know, it, it definitely helps some of those that, that are in a position to be able to afford it. And, and believe it, you know? me, I'm not saying, Tom or Kevin, you mm-hmm. guys are going to just automatically raise prices. What sure. I'm saying is when you do have an expensive repair due to costs and due to labor and due to everything, you don't get the fight as, as you did because they're almost expecting to be punched in the stomach. I've been able to give my guys a raise, which is nice. Yep. And we're having an easier time making ends meet while still being able to stay below some of the larger now, companies. Are you saying that um, people are repairing more than buying? Are they yes. keeping cars longer? I think they're doing more major repairs to cars, you know, more so in the last two or three years than they were prior. Yeah. Okay. So, um, all right. Um, well, here's the deal. Whatever's on your mind... Give us a call. We have our car guys today. Today is cars, but that doesn't mean we just talk cars. I want to talk to Monty, who called yesterday. Monty, um, what's going on with you, Monty? What's happening? Hey, Tom. Um, Well, uh, I feel like I'm just getting uh, unfairly treated here from my employer. I got fired. Um, Now, there is something that people, there's a myth in the law, now should I call it a law? There's a myth in general about wrongful termination. And the reason I mention that is there truly is not really something called, I mean, it, it's called wrongful termination, but there's very seldom wrongful termination. Wrongful termination, and then I'll let you talk, Monty, trust me. Wrong, wrongful, We're in at will state. Yes. Wrongful termination has to be for something illegal. Just hold on, Monty, for a sec, because I I wanted to start this. And I have my friend, Peter Boyles, who's, in my opinion, you know, everyone, by the way, who's in broadcasting in Denver, they call a legend. I mean, it's amazing. You'll have somebody on the air for two years and they retire (laughs) and they call him a legend. And, uh, you know, it's amazing. You know, like Channel 9 always says legends retiring. And so, so what I'm getting at is Peter is truly a legend, truly. Okay. Peter and I've been around a long time. So I, I love having Peter on. He came on for my 70th birthday. It was fun, but I wanted to ask honest to God, cause I think Peter is not crazy. He's, he's not, he's not crazy, devoted and loyal to anybody. Neither am I, but I wanted to get his impression of the state of the union last night. I really do. And, and people, this is important to us. And people say, don't get political, Tom. No, I discuss things that we have to discuss. And this is one of them. And I believe, in my opinion, Biden did way better than anyone expected. Mm-hmm. Way, way, way better. But I, I haven't talked to Peter yet. Peter, uh, what do you think? Hey. What do you think, bro? Well, first, first of all, I've been... I, I from radio stations unlawfully (laughs) (laughs) both of us yeah both of us um i'm with you um i i didn't know what to expect 
and I was pleasantly surprised by by Joe Biden. He uh, he wasn't what people were waiting to see. The slow Joe, you know, he he came out swinging. Now whether you agree with what he said or didn't agree, but he's the man that we have seen stumble up steps and yeah you know, and, and guffaw and you know yeah no you you're right Tom. you're right hey peter do you think he was on anything like any boosters or vitamins or b12s Boy, you know there's a lot of that going around that you know they tuned him up and uh put him out there I, you know we know that presidents in the past have Jack Kennedy was famous for getting shots from the guy they called Dr. Feelgood. Wow. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. Hey, Peter. But he came the, out swinging. Peter, yeah. he, 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 he the, do you feel? No, I feel he did. You know what? I, this is, I said this to 70. I said, you know, Seb, I didn't realize how great we're doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Peter, I want to ask oh, you: yeah. do, do you feel that he pay, he played the blame game too much? Well, it was a it wasn't a State of the Union. I thought it was a campaign speech. That's exactly uh, what it was. Yeah, I thought, and he kept calling Trump my predecessor. That's right. It's like the name he the name he could not he couldn't say. Ineffable, uh, right? But yeah. He, yeah, but he kept calling, and I think he said my predecessor. I think I read thirteen times. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and but it was a campaign speech. But and he really he he he, he never hard. obviously you don't bring up failures obviously. But what he calls yeah. a success, I mean, what what this thing about Russia? I didn't realize we're at war with Russia or or whatever. But I think that no. he wants to he wants the the wag wag what do they call it wag the wag the wag dog the tail. Yeah, yeah. Why, that, and then the tail, wagging the, tail wagging, the dog. wagging the dog. I think he wants us to rally yeah. around something, not him. Well, and he also didn't mention Israel Gaza till the very end, and that's a front burner. Um, you know, it was there's speechwriters that write those. He, you know, the, most of those guys they don't. I mean, they but they did a masterful they, job because I came away if I believed him. Everything wrong with this country, everything wrong with this country is the Republicans. Well, yeah, I mean, that's but that's why I'd say it was a campaign speech. There wasn't a, you know, we've watched Reagan, who was the master at those things. And, you know, they he didn't sit up there and pot shot the Democrats or, you know, they talked about the nation. They talked about what's going on, talked about foreign policy. Manny. But. He hit Probably, some. He hit yeah. some nerves, uh, uh, like prescription drugs and things. He knew what bad yeah. guys to go after. You know, billionaires and 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 oh. you know. Uh, but by the way, um, Peter, just a quick question: Do you think over the last four years he's done stuff anything really good? What do you like? Um, <laughs> I got to think. Remember that I'm thinking. I'm no, thinking. I'm. I'm curious. I'm curious uh, what you think about what he did. I think he's a, he's the accidental president. I don't. He won the election fair and square, but um, you know, I I can't figure a guy like that. What's he doing, president? I mean, we want a vibrant, we want a smart, you want a, and he doesn't strike me. I mean, we've seen him stumble upstairs and forget people's names and turn the wrong way and. I mean, that, that's the guy that I was used to. And so he's the guy that I normally watch. And then this guy comes out of the box last night, and he's, he's on fire. I know. Um, I know. I'd, ha- I'd, have to think, I'd have to think about it. But, uh, you know, I, I think he's been a foreign policy disaster. I think that the domestic stuff may be. But I love what you said, and who's smarter than Stephanie, but saying, like, I didn't realize we were doing so good. <laughs> right, we're, we're we're doing. That's a great. That's, that's a great line. So anyway, Peter, uh, um, uh, and any any a parting. Uh, what about January sixth? I want to ask you something. Do you think sure. they're making too much of? Should they is, is that still a viable 
platform or plank for your platform? Well, in, in my mind, that's why I can't be around these top of the party Republicans. They, they attempted to overthrow or abate the Constitution. There's there's no question uh, what they tried to do. But do you think Trump you know, wanted the, do you think Trump's goal was to truly overthrow the government and become a dictator president? Not to overcome the government, to, but to to stop a, an election count and attempt to uh, from attempt to begin to begin anew. And Tommy, sixty-one times in courtrooms, and I don't know how many other different, even in his own Justice Department, that was that was a fair and square election. He, yeah, Donald wow. Trump, Donald Trump got beat. I mean. I think where it was unfair, Peter, was with the with the censoring of media, where media where where they were telling media, don't talk about this, don't talk about this. And and me and well, you know, big tech and media, they followed along, Peter. There 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 were so many stories suppressed about Hunter Biden and about his connection. Oh, listen, I, I, I'm not arguing about that. I'm I'm talking about the sense of of what happened uh and Donald Trump lost that election. Um, and then he couldn't accept it. Right. No, he lost. They, they begin. Yeah. And that's really, to me, that was the turn away was, uh, come on. You know, you, you were, you were beaten, shake the man's hand. If he'd have done that the way the world is right now and gone, been you know, yeah. the government in exile or, you yeah. know, the lion in winter, Tommy, he'd be walking it back in right now. Well, Peter, thank you. I got to take a break, and I'll, I'll say goodbye. But I want I you, you, man. I want you back on again. Love you, Peter. It's great. We got more coming up. I'm here with Sean O'Keefe and Dan Blair, Chief Wealth Advisors at Summit Wealth Strategies and hosts of the Retirement Summit radio show and podcast. Guys, taxes can be a big hurdle for someone who wants to sell a highly appreciated asset like a small business or real estate, but you have a strategy that can be a real game changer for dealing with the capital gains. Tell us about it. Yes, really, this strategy allows a seller to potentially defer all the taxes on the capital gains so we can keep what you would have paid to Uncle Sam working for you. It works really well for small business owners and allows them to continue to build their wealth. For these entrepreneurs, their exit strategy is often the biggest financial decision they will ever make. And many owners are reluctant. Sponsor, and I was not. I mean, these people claim. Um, One of my sponsors quoted something at 1295, and it was a major HVAC thing. And he thought it was 12, the the guy said, I thought it was $1,295. And I said, come on, nobody in their right mind, no one in their right mind would expect this repair. And then they signed it too. But it was 12,095, not or 12, when they said 1295, it wasn't 1295. It was 12,095. Or 129 or something. It was 129, meaning 12,900. That's what they said, 129. And he thought it was 12,000, 1200. I mean, it didn't make sense to me. Because even the figure didn't make sense. He said, I thought it was 1200 not 12 But he had it in writing in front of him at some point. But no, it was on an iPad. So he signed it and said, well, I didn't really see it, and I never got a copy. And a lot of these people do sign iPads now, and they don't get an immediate copy. Yeah. It's emailed I to them. I refuse that. I go in the hospital, I make them it, print it, it out, it's and it drives them nuts, but and, they, and they so, have to. But that was a disagreement. And, but I didn't like what Dan said, so I, I mean, he said something really insulting. Mm. And I... I we. Retirement Planning Center of the Rockies. Man, do I like these people. Now, I'm going to be transparent here and tell you, they are a sponsor, but I am a customer. And that is the truth. They have helped me put together a retirement plan. And what they believe in is helping you build a nest egg. If you have a nest egg or get one, how to protect the nest egg to produce income. And they do a three-bucket solution, one in safety, one in growth, one in income. They, they really have some sensible plans. I love it. And they talk to you about insurance, estate planning, everything you need for retirement. Call them and find out what they can do for you. It's a free uh, consultation, as many as you need to feel comfortable. rpcenter.com, rpcenter.com, 970 what is that? It's 3211. 
That's uh, and and I'm going to tell you, you're going to love it. Retirement Planning Center of the Rockies, rpcenter.com, dot com nine seven zero six six three thirty two eleven. Okay. Um, anyway, uh, with more smarty pants, it's a little more complicated. I can't do it. Yes, I can. Without upsetting you. It, it breaks my heart with Marty. Uh, he's a great guy. But it does, some of what happened does kind of makes sense now that when, when you figure out how you don't have to get these jobs and all that. <laughs> no, I went after him. Yeah, I know. But you know what? We didn't realize what we were dealing with at the time. Right. Truly. <laughs> These guys are funny. I think Camilla looked like whack-a-mole. She got up and down so many times. Oh man, she is. <laughs> I turned it off for a little while because I couldn't handle every third word. The whole place gets up and applauds. It's just like, come on. What was this? The speech. Did you watch it? Yeah, they they applauded seriously every sentence. Really? For a while there, it's just like, come on. Whose speech was this? It was a state of the address? State of the Union. State of the Union. Every, they do that every time. What did they do? They, it seemed like they were applauding with every oh. sentence. I mean, it was just a little bit overkill yeah, for it me. Was, it, look, it was a campaign. Speech. It was. So I don't like to mix business and politics. But that being said, my wife is into Robert Kennedy Jr. Yep. He's what do you guys guy. think? Yeah. I truly believe that he could be a good president. Yeah. But he'll never win. I truly believe he would be good. He's a, he's a conspiracy nut, though. Well, that's just is he point. really? Yeah. I don't know. Is he? Yeah. Or is he just trying to pull the Trump supporters? I think he just he, he doesn't have an allegiance to anybody, and that's why he's just kind of leaving swimming on his own all the time. Yeah. He pisses everybody off. Yeah. yeah. Which is what I would prefer. You I want, want that guy, that, yeah, that isn't buddy buddy with up. everybody. Yeah, drain the swamp yeah. stuff, all that. Yeah. yeah. Well, after all the um, third-party candidates. I'm Tom Martino, 303-713-TALK, waterpros.net, the best water at the lowest prices. Do you know what? I, I, I'm telling you, if you're going to do supplements and take care of your health, you got to think of water. 1400 bucks to get you all the drinking water, never buy bottled water with plastic in it. Waterpros.net, 303-862-5554. Monty says he was terminated. He's upset. Okay, Monty, so I, I want to ask you a few questions, and we do have labor attorneys that can help, but I want to ask you something, Monty. How long were you employed at this place? Uh, two years. And what did you do? Uh, I was a server uh, slash cook. Okay, now, I want to know something. What was the reason given for firing you? I actually never got a reason until I got my uh, something in the mail. Okay, so how did you first find out you were terminated? How did it start? Uh, I went into my sh I went to my shift and they had crossed my name off the uh, list. So when you got there, they didn't let you work. They didn't give you any notice. You got there and you saw your name crossed off, and you asked what's going on, and they said you're fired. Yes. Whoa. Had you missed any work? Do you think, give me, give me your gut feeling, Monty, first and foremost. Do you think you did anything wrong? Absolutely not. Now, give me your other gut now. Why do you think you were fired? Why, why you think you were? I, there, I don't know. They, did, I, they didn't like me or they, the, let me give you, I'll give you a quick rundown of what happened. I was working with the supervisor because she was, she was uh, filling in for a call out, which I had never done there ever, never called out. Well, the only, the only write up I've ever gotten there was uh, employee of the month. So I was working with my supervisor. I didn't feel well. I told her I didn't feel well. She says, go home. She texted me that night, said, Due to you not reporting to a supervisor, I'm going to have to take you off the schedule. I replied back to her. I said, you are my supervisor, and I reported to you. Yeah, so what did she well. say? 
she said, well, I, we need to talk to HR. So a week goes by. So, so wait a minute. So she claims you walked off the job without talking to a supervisor. That's what, yes. Okay, then what? And, and so we, the, so by, she takes off the schedule. My HR meeting is for another week. I go into the HR meeting. They say, we're demoting you to room trays. Um, but, you, but so come in tomorrow for your, your, your shift your regular shift, and then next – that was on a Friday, and I was supposed to work Saturday at my original position. Yep. And then they were putting me on room trace the following week. Okay. She so, said, so, so okay, so did you accept the demotion, or did you say no? I, I, did, well, I said I was very upset with it, and I'd be talking to, uh, talking to somebody All right, so it. what happened after that? When, when, when were you actually fired? Did you go in that one Saturday – for your last day as a server cook before doing tray duty? Uh, no, uh, I did not. Friday was our meeting when they said, you're being demoted. Saturday morning, I went in for my shift, and they said, you'd been fired. Okay, so you never did get a demotion. They didn't even let you take the demotion. They probably thought you turned it down. Well, he was saying what he was going to say to the HR people. What did you say to the HR people at the meeting? I said I, I said I was upset about the demotion, but I was. Did Phillip you call him on that Friday, morning. or did you? When did you actually call them? Friday. Friday was our meeting, uh, and then Saturday I went. Saturday, the very next morning, I went in to do my shift, and they said that I did cross off the schedule. And at that point, I did call. Uh, the supervisor and the supervisor of the whole And what building, did they say? They would not return my calls. See, here is a classic example of being fired. And let's say I take you at your word and everything you're saying is true. And it was unfair or for no good reason. Okay. Now, what I, I'm going to ask you again, what reason do you think it was? Uh, well, uh, th- they say drinking. Okay, see, th- uh, that no. now, hold on. What I'm saying is, even if they didn't say drinking, let's say they were unfair. They said, you know, you shouldn't have reported to this supervisor. You should have reported to the other supervisor, and you should have known that. Let's say they were unfair. Do you know that there is no covenant of fairness in the employment law? I realize the at will situation it's not it's more than at will what i'm saying is they can be stupid they can lie and be unfair they they can't lie to cause you civil damages you can sue them but they can lie they can say you never told us you were leaving and you did tell them they can lie because they it it doesn't matter the underlying they they can do what they want that they don't people think their bosses have to be fair and nice and all of that what they can't do is create a hostile work environment i mean they can't scream at you and intimidate you and assault you and all that but i'm talking about the way they handle their business they can be totally incompetent and unfair i'm not saying it's a good thing but there are no laws that address that so when people call and say it was unfair i shouldn't have been let go i wasn't drinking well Guess what? If they did, they put that down in writing about the drinking, Monty. Well, this is uh, th- so. The one thing was was the ageism, which was I was thinking that maybe they wanted to get rid of me for because of my age. How old are you? Sixty-one. Okay. Did they um, mention I, what did they actually put in your termination letter? Okay. Yes, my termination letter. I got discharged for be, uh, behavior policy violations and or continued behavior issues after corrective action. Okay. 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 Fine. They didn't have to give you a reason, but they did. Now you're disputing that. How do you know that behavioral violation is is an uh, alleged drinking? Because so after this happened, I applied for unemployment. Um, and and they I said you were not- fired for cause, and you can't get it. No, they said I was fired for alcohol and drug uh, use. Although now that was never addressed to me. Now, ever. if that is, is that denying you, is that denying you unemployment? Well, I'm. It's in the dispute Good. section right now. Good. I'm right now, filling this out. Uh, the I got this to. 
yesterday, it says, this is what it says, it says, your former employer indicated that you abandoned the job due to suspicions about being under the influence. Of okay, here's what you need to do. Here's what you need to do, Monty. Okay, listen carefully, please. You got to dispute it. You got it. You have to go there and dispute it. If, if, if they don't have absolute hard proof with a blood test or urine test or, or testimony from several people, they will lose. The unemployment division bends over backwards in favor of who? Employees. Kevin, why do you know that? Yeah, Have you had people walk off the job before? No, I had a guy we caught drinking in the car. I've at, had people walk off, literally walk out of the show, yeah. and they got unemployment. I got one guy that, that got severance pay and moved to the Bahamas and could, or wherever the hell he yeah. went, um, and he couldn't work, and he said that he wanted He got unemployment. Yeah. No, this guy got unemployment. We watched him take, I had somebody take a else shot. use my credit card yeah. to buy liquor, yeah. and she got unemployment. Yeah. I had proof. So, Monty, that's what you got to do. You got to appeal it because there's no such thing as wrongful termination. Patricia wants to talk about living spaces coming up. I won a. I won one of those. Did you? Yeah. You I did? That's a mate. Luck. How? Yeah. The, the guy had threatened um, Laura. Um, I was in the hospital with my leg, and the guy came in one day and said, um, "That's amazing." Some, that some about the state agriculture department reports that only 29 federally regulated dairy farms are yeah. left in the state. And That's down mind, from 53 farms operating in 2020. Right there are also fewer processing yeah. plants so, uh, to ship the milk. I'm Chad Bauer. After it's obvious, he got terminated for that. I fired this guy for doing shooters in his car before work. Right. According to AAA, a spike in gas prices is common this time of year as refineries undergo seasonal maintenance. The average price of gas in the state right now is $3.25 per gallon. I'm Chad yeah, Bauer. Know, I'll tell you what I've done is anytime I think somebody is a substance. After a more than year long investigation, 58 year old Ronald Fay and 63 year old Jill Watkins have been charged with embezzlement and felony theft after more than $100,000 went missing from Gateway High School. Fay is also charged with tampering with physical evidence. After investigators say he erased everything from his school district issued cell phone and laptop after he realized he was under investigation. Fay and Watkins are due in court in May. Chad Bauer. KOA uh, News. Minor major repairs. He does old cars, new cars, domestic and um, foreign. And he's just a good guy. RKC does a full inspection of your car as well when you take it in for anything. And that's a courtesy inspection. The state agriculture department reports that only 29 federally regulated dairy farms are left RKC in the state. That's down from 53 well. farms operating in 2020. Now, there are also day, fewer processing to plans RVDs. to ship the milk. I'm Chad Bauer. Com. Lazy Days is a great place to go for new and used RVs. According to AAA, a spike in gas prices is common this time of year as refineries undergo seasonal maintenance. The average price of gas in the state right now is $3.25 per gallon. On the I'm Chad side. Bauer. And it's about a quarter mile south of that uh, exit 240. That uh, used to be Century RV. Our buddies are still there as lazy days after a more than year-long investigation 58 year old ronald fay and 63 year old jill watkins have been charged with embezzlement and felony theft after more than a hundred thousand dollars went missing from gateway high school fay is also charged with tampering with okay. physical evidence after this investigators say he erased everything from his school um, district issued cell phone and laptop after he realized he was under investigation fay and watkins are due in court in may chad bauer oh, koa news new one. okay um, I asked for uh, President Biden's accomplishments uh -huh. on chat GPT. They filled up three pages. They love them. See, artificial intelligence is liberal. I don't give a shit. Oh, what it's you, so, I don't care what you say. It's so slanted. It's, it's pathetic. Liberal. It's skews liberal. Woke. It does. It does. I use it for, look, significant accomplishments reflecting a complex legacy <clears throat> hmm. 
Now I'm going to ask, who accomplished more? <laughs> Watch. Okay. Trump or Biden? Biden's still taking credit for the 15 million he put to work after COVID stopped, which is, you know, it wasn't right the first hundred times he took credit for it. I I know I'm, Mark says I bet him that Mark Mark says Biden will not be the candidate. Do you remember that? Yeah, I don't think he he will be. Do you think who's going to run in his place? You think right now, after that speech, they're going to take him out? I, you know, that could change. Yeah, that, that speech, I think, helped. Didn't hurt him. I thought it was going to hurt him, but it certainly didn't hurt him. My God, I asked who did a better job. They fucking just killed Trump. They Mm -hmm. said that Biden is the best. Sure. Holy shit. That's the scary part of people start treating that like factual. It's got to be right. It's machine learning. He also, Trump also helped spread misinformation, polarizing the media. Whereas Biden did clim- uh, so did positive things with climate, civil rights, and social justice. Holy shit. <laughs> this is so. It's pathetic. It really is. I'd rather ask TikTok. Oh my God. Hi, Tom Martino, 303-713-TALK, 713-8255. I am here to help you. I swear to you, if you call me with a problem, we do everything we can to help you. Um, By the way, lawkp.com, I want to mention, they are uh, estate planning attorneys. It's um, really, it's Keel and Park. And I want you to give them a call because what they will do is a free consultation of everything you own and have including businesses, and then come back with a flat rate price to help you estate plan for your legacy. LawKP.com. Now, I want to talk to Patricia, and I invite others to call with car problems today for our experts and other problems as well. 303-713-TALK. And I also truly want to know how you thought Biden did, not as a political show, a real honest to God impression of how he did. Not if you believe him. I, I'm just curious. And it has a lot to do with age, with abilities. You know, I'm aging, everyone's aging, right? I just want to know what you think. Patricia, let's talk to you about this living. What is living spaces? Living spaces is the new furniture store in Thornton. Okay, it's, and and how is it part of a chain, Patricia? It's part. Is it's it part, part of a chain? chain? Okay, so let's yeah. talk about it. Go ahead and tell me about it. Okay, so if anybody watches any TV, you see lots of wonderful advertisements, and you go to the store. Yes, I the see. I I see this online. Very very nice yeah. layout. Okay, go ahead. Right, but it ends at the sales at the store. Why? And if you're lucky enough. Well, because they contract out all of the delivery, the repair, the customer service calls, and it goes to various places. So you're saying that the furniture itself and the store, 
they might be pretty good, but then it ends after you buy it. After, right. And if, you, if you're lucky and you don't have any trouble. Now, I wish I would have looked at the reviews on the Better Business Bureau before I bought there because I, I would have seen that people are very unhappy with uh, the problem resolution. So what I want to, what I'm hoping that you can help me with is where to go next because okay, tell me what happened. Give me your experience, okay. and then I'll do it. Okay, in less than four months, so November 12th, we purchased two chairs, a power recliner, and a manual, and you purchased we purchased the warranty and the delivery package and everything that goes along with it, and a battery pack. Now, the only reason that I bought a power recliner is because of the they offered the battery pack. Now, that I battery pack, the- is it like on my bed? I have a bed that is um, an awesome bed that you can move up and down. But if power goes out, the battery helps you for a few, you know, until you get power back. Is that what that is? No, this battery pack is to allow you to use the chair in the middle of the room and not have a cord plugged into a, a wall outlet. That's okay, so in other words, in other words, you never plug it in. You, no. How do you I, recharge I it? Well, that's the thing that according to the battery pack, uh, in you know, uh, brochure, that it it has once it gets to within ten percent of capacity, it gives you an audible mm-hmm. low battery warning. Yes, and then do you remove the battery and take it to a charging pack, or do you it, unravel a cord and plug in the chair? You unravel the cord, and you uh, allegedly you recharge the battery pack while it's still in the chair. Okay, okay. Now, and is it a big uh, cord, uh, or like a big power cord, or is it like a little USB cord? No, it's a, it's like a big power. cord. Okay, so what's it the has, problem? What was the problem? Okay, the problem is that um, in we purchased two chairs. We didn't only have trouble with that, but I will say that in. Less than four months. And these are two, uh, you bought two recliners, two battery-operated recliners? No, one one manual. Now, we had trouble with the manual one, too, in that the delivery people put the leg on backwards. We didn't notice it. So we, you know, we had... Okay, I just want to talk about what has not been corrected. Okay, um... Nothing has been corrected. Other so than, the one the, the, the one recliner with the, the leg on the wrong way is still like that? No, nope, no, nope. they did correct that. See, that's what I mean. Uh, let's talk problem. about your problems today. Okay. My problem today is that my power recliner chair has failed three times. Okay. Now, the, company, the company did replace both chairs. I've had two repairs, two failed repairs. They did some things right on the manual recliner, but um, they But right now, part. let me just ask you, you have two chairs. Okay. Is the manual recliner acceptable right now? It is. Okay. Let's go to the electric one. Oh, hold on. Let's go to the battery one. Today. Okay. It is. Today. today. What, what's today. wrong with the battery one today? After the second battery pack, so they've given me two chairs. Now I had four chairs instead of two, right? and two battery packs. Okay, I understand well, you want to give me a history. By the way, I want to tell no. people this. This is important. And, and Patricia, I mean this sincerely. See, this is what happens when businesses do not do things correctly. What happens is consumers like Patricia, they don't want to tell you about just one problem because they've had a plethora of problems. So what you do is you create what I call a walking, talking billboard who wants to spill the beans about every experience they've had with you. And that's why you get bad reviews. It's even if you do the right thing, finally, even if they finally get this battery operator working, she'll never go back there because of the accumulation of difficulty and what I call a journey of misery. So, by the way, I'm hoping, Patricia, because they really give a damn. Have you gone online to every single uh, forum you can to put up a bad review up? I did. I did a complaint with the Better Business no, Bureau. No, no, that'll do you nothing. The Better Business Bureau is a dinosaur. They'll do nothing. What you need, online reviews. Have you gone to Trustpilot, Yelp, Google, and put up reviews? Those are the three top. 
have you seen this trend? And when you Google this furniture place, their Google reviews are not on there. Their stars are not on there. Why? They're hiding their Google. How do they, I, I didn't I don't think know you were allowed to. But I've noticed that for poor companies. I'd never you noticed that. You look at that. them on Yelp and they're horrible. Now horrible listen, Yelp. now listen, Patricia, let, let's move on. What, what today is wrong with the battery and how can we help you? I need to know that right now. Okay. I um, want to have a new, I want to either them to remake the chair a third time with a manual recliner, or I want a refund. Okay. It is working plugged into the wall, but I do not want a chair plugged into the wall. I get it. it yeah. So I want to, if they can remake it a third time, this is the second chair I've got, a third. That's, but here's the bottom line. I keep... You cannot go to the store and demand to talk to a manager. I have done this three times. I guess when you no go and ask for a manager, what do they say? They say, go back to customer service. You go back to customer service, and no, no one there is authorized. All right, give us, uh, give us a contact. We're going to call for you. Deputy Doc, I want to call for her. She sounds frustrated, and well, she should be. Plus, we'll give you some follow-ups coming up. I'm Tom Martino. Yeah, these guys don't have a single good review on Yelp. No, Yelp has trashed them. Yeah, yeah. One star rating on Yelp. Their Google reviews come up. I don't. Not on the first page, at least. Yeah, it did. For me, it did. This is well. This is. Oh, I can't turn it. Let me see what you did. Because they have good, decent Google reviews. Oh, maybe because you typed furniture? I just typed in everything. I just started typing. That shouldn't matter. Yeah. But I don't I got to do spots, guys. Why is it taking so damn long to get to my important shit? Can you talk to Heather? Good to know. Thank you. Did I say shit or fuck? <laughs> The Art of Granite. I love The Art of Granite. Why do I love them? Because they're one of the only sponsors I have that can do countertops of any kind and give you a price on the phone, whether natural stone or man-made materials. The Art of Granite is the place to go. Wholesale on all materials, tear out and haul away is free. And they do the kitchen for the bathroom free when you have the kitchen done. Give them a call, theartofgranite.com, 303-386-5919. Get your price right now, 386-5919. The Art of Granite. Now, Keel and Park I told you about, an E on the end of those names. That's Keel and Park. I want you to look them up, lawkp.com. I love the way they do estate planning. They can help you if you have a business, too. You want to move on to your heirs or to sell. They can help you with a trust, simple wills, a payable on death certificates, everything to do with your legacy. Keel and Park. LawKP.com. Now, these guys will go over everything, and they give you a free consultation to go over everything. Then... They give you flat rate pricing and you can pick tiers of what you want to do. You can do a little or do it all. And that's the way they do it. All prices up front, flat rates, no nickel and diming. 970-818-8198. 970-818-8198. Don't let the 970 fool you. They deal with the entire state. LawKP.com. This is amazing to see just how useless Google reviews has become. It has? Why? Because on, on Google, they're 4.5. Are you shitting me? They have yeah. a good review. Good, an 800. They've uh, got the robot, the robot reviews. You yep. can tell because yep. it's three words. Yeah, Loved it. Yep. Store is great. Yep. We'll go back, you know? But even on, uh, on Yelp, they said the store, they enjoyed the experience and everything was after the sale. After the sale, yeah, yeah. the okay. follow-up. Let me text you. This, this is this. for I'm us as a group watching. when we buy pizza right. for the studio because it's, it's, I have two cards. One's troubleshooter, one's referrals. The referrals pays for that because we're all, and 
I'm just going to text it to you so I don't yeah. give my number over the air like yeah. that. Perfect. Like yeah, it's starting to come up now. Doc, <laughs> did, you, did you have to cancel your I don't know if it'll work. I did two minutes after. Well, I'm minutes. looking at you now starting okay, to lift so it up. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. This is the credit card. So I'm going to do this. So you're now. You, need this. you don't need my login. You just need a. And then. That yeah, look, look at that. Look at that. Yeah. That's awesome. That. I can so see it. And then zip. The zip is. Yeah, and keep just keep that on your records there. And anchovies on the side, but I, yeah, I think one large would be fine for us today, right? Um, well, does Doc, Doc, you want a cheese? No, I'll, I'll get a you a small cheese, cheese if you want one. No, no, I'm not gonna eat cheese. Okay. okay, just get a large okay. pizza with okay. uh, extra cheese sauce, pepperoni, and then get on the side some anchovies. Do you want sausage too? Whatever you want. I don't know, guys. You want whatever? Some, what do you want? Doesn't tell, matter you to me. Tell me. Makes me no difference. Just whatever. Um, what do you want? Tom? Less heartburn. <laughs> okay, so pepperoni and cheese. Pepperoni and Is that'll be good, right? Pep and yeah, cheese. Yeah. I need some water. So after. As soon okay, as we'll I, get you some. We got bottled right, water. As soon as I realized that, two minutes later, I canceled the card. I'm going to do it at the top of the hour. I'm going to go get you water. Cool. I'll get it for now. Oh, thank you. Okay, I didn't want to ask. Thanks, brother. So that's what it was. As, as soon as I turned the furniture, then it came up. Yeah, okay. When you just type in living spaces, it didn't show that thing on the right. What's DEI test? North Face offers a 20% off for taking a DEI test. What is the DEI? Is that a diversity thing? Oh, come on. Yeah. You know, fuck these corporations. Oh, just turn up the GM. Just fuck all of you. I mean, I I don't go to corporations to get woke. I got um. I don't. I just tell you this. Don't forget to tip your. Oh, that's. I mean, I'll take it. (laughs) Sure, I love A and W. Thank you. Um, I got trespassed from Best Buy. What? Yeah. Yeah. You got what? Trespassed from Best Buy. Police. The police came and said you can Why? no longer. I went in shopping for a computer bag. I saw the one I liked. Saw the price on the shelf, forty bucks. Went up to pay for it. It comes up at seventy bucks. Now I could have just paid it, but it, to me it was a principle thing. Mm-hmm. I want the price on the shelf. Sure. So How I much was back, the price on the shelf? Forty. 40. Was it really? It, there was a label right there, and that's where, where the that bag item. was hanging. Right. You know they can claim a mistake. Yeah. Hi, Tom Martino, your troubleshooter, 303 713 Talk, 713 8255. We're working. Uh, Deputy Doc, are you going to call that furniture place eventually here? Yes, sir. You know, I think that we just have to see what they're going to do. This woman is frustrated. I don't blame her. And I know she wanted to tell me the whole story, and she should. I want to talk to Jeff now. Jeff, you need advice buying your 19 year old daughter a car. Now, I want to ask you a few questions, Jeff. Okay. Okay. Sure. What is the car going to be used for? What is she doing with her uh, life? Going to school. And, Co- you know, is she in college? She is, yeah. Is she away at college or here at college? No, local. She's local. Now, how long do you want this car to last her? Uh, Ten years. You want to buy her a car that she can just depend on. I suggest, now I don't know what these guys are going to say. I haven't asked them, but they're the smart ones as far as what to buy. Right. I went over this with a lady one time and she came back to tell me I was right. She wanted to buy a car and at the time she was looking at 6000 to 7 cuz she had some cash. And I said don't I'm don't a, do I'm that. 6 to 10. I said right. don't do that. If you have 6 to 7 to put down, take that 6000 and put it down on a Kia or a Hyundai because they had the 10 year warranties. And I said and they were selling new at the time for about 18 or 19, with her loan, she'd have a payment. She goes, I don't want a payment. So she came back to me, listen to this. Two years later, she comes back. The prorated amount that she would have paid on a new car with a 10-year warranty was way less on that three-year loan or four-year loan than she had with that used car because she put the cash into the used car and she had repairs and maintenance adding up 
to what, if you divided it by the number of months she owned it mm-hmm. for that three or four years, was more <laughs> than if she had a payment for yep. a new car. She, it's actually more per month. It's just people don't like the idea of a payment, but if it is on something, now I'm not suggesting you just walk in and overpay, you'll be underwater forever. I am saying you get something that is smart. Now, if you really want to keep it and she really wants to keep it, one of the smartest ways to buy a car, one of the smartest ways is to buy, is to take a three-year lease, buy the car, very little down, very little per month, because you put as low miles as you want on it, like 10000 a year, and you say, well, wait a minute, Tom. If I put 10000 a year on this car, the residual will be really, uh, I'll, be, I'll be socked with mileage penalties. But if you're going to buy it from yourself in three years, you got to have a lease that allows you to do this. Then you're not socked with a penalty, and then you refinance it in three years, and you're buying a used car from yourself that you had for three years. And, and so you literally can have a car, uh, you, you finance, a, you lease for three years with very low payments, and then and then do another three years if you want with a refi or pay it off. And that's the best way if you're really going to keep it. But I say you're probably really not going to keep it. What I would do, though, is buy a new car. Long and short, I'd buy a new car with a great warranty. And I'd buy it from someone that, that we know and trust where you can get a great deal if you have money to put down and have credit. Now, if you don't like that and you're asking for used cars, I would go to JFR Cars and talk to Rodney Mm -hmm. to find a car. Now, to find out what to buy, I want you to hold on. And we'll figure out some of the most reliable cars to buy. All right. We also have Charles with an update on one of car problem, too. We have more. I hate that out music. Why did we change it? No. Why did we? Why did? No, I didn't. I used to have my own, and I loved it. You know what it was? I believe it was Tracy Ullman. Um, the only song she's ever had, I believe. I, re- I really... I really want to be with you. It's so cool. I love the song. she did it with I believe that's the one Trace or Trace Oman did one song with Paul McCartney and it went to number one in England Britain I I have a sad feeling though that Biden's gonna win he's gonna be our next president I just think the Democratic machine is too hard to beat right now. It's, it's, it is a machine. Yeah. With all the woke shit. Yep. I mean, everyone loves it. Yep. If, if, if one hour is going to change that much, we're pe- heart attacks and strokes. That's bullshit. Oh, uh, the one she made with Paul McCartney was called They Don't Know. They don't know about us. They don't know about love. What's that? I love her.
You know, 15 Corolla for nine grand right now. Yeah. Or a used Prius. You know, we were bouncing around with uh, Rodney. And Dusty Springfield did. With, uh, I'm sorry, it wasn't Tracy. He was on his dealer website, the, really the price of used uh, uh, Teslas. I mean, the market was just. Oh, it crashed horribly. Really I ended up in an EV lease. Yeah. And boy, so if I had just waited till December, would have cut my payments in half. Yeah. You know? Because he was looking so, um, at the 2023 20, Model 3s, yeah. you know, with yeah, like, like 5,000 miles for under 20. Yeah. I got to try not to think about it because yeah. it breaks my heart. And yeah. I don't know what I can do. I'm stuck, right? You yeah. agree to the lease, you're, st you're in it until yeah. it's done. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's that's a tough pill to swallow. Even I love this song. Huh? I used to have this as my out music. I love these old songs. Yeah. Don't those old songs make you smile? Yeah, they do. Don't they? I mean, they're not the greatest uh, compositions, but they no. make you smile. This is simple. And then this Tracy Ullman made... Um, they don't know about us. That is such a cute song. They don't know, and it was made with Paul McCartney. Do you know who Tracy? Do you know Tracy Allman? Do you know who she is? She's a comedian. Comedian. She's wonderful. It is Tracy Allman? I never heard about this DEI. Is that something we have to do? No. Like give our employees or something? No. It's just it's. It's a woke program with corporations where you try to, you know. Have you registered yourself as the uh, beneficiary of your company yet or whatever? Have you heard of that? Mm -mm. We got to do it before 2025. Really? Yeah. It's for uh, money laundering and all that crap. This is another. This She's a brilliant comedian. But she retired when her husband died, who was her producer. I didn't know she could sing. God, she is a wonderful comedian. She is so funny. But she made this with McCartney, I thought, but I don't see him in this. Let's see, or did he just write it? No, he was in the video. I. I trying to find him. There he is. Can you Biden for using the term illegal alien? Uh, no, no, he used just the word illegal. Illegal? Okay. Can you play that stuff over the YouTube air or whatever? I can when I'm at home because I'm hooked oh, up. You, you know, okay, yeah. I'd have to have him do it, but now you mean will I get flagged? Yes. If you don't have if I'm say this, hey, uh, if we're doing a story about it or a call, yeah. and say, do you mean this song and we play it? It's called fair use. Yeah. If you're, you're talking about it or something. Yeah. But if I just play it, no. You have to have the rights to it. Yeah. We have a library where we have the rights. We got flagged because I used to start my show with help. And no one ever fucking cared until it started going online. Then I was flagged oh. by YouTube and I was flagged yeah. by Facebook and I was flagged by everybody. They have bots. And um, the, you know, is it United Artists Help? What is BMI? BMI. BMI goes out and, and, and in a bar, if you have a fucking, if you play a radio in your in your gas station, yeah. I mean, Shop, yeah. seat, they'll, they'll nab you for it. Sure. If you have a radio playing for the public, not for the public. Yeah. 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 Ripped off, you have to pay bad right. news. You need advice so you don't have to lose. Well, come running just.
This is the Troubleshooter Show. Now, Tom Martino. Hi, Tom Martino here. 303-713-TALK, 703-8255. We asked Deputy Doc to make a call to the furniture place. He talked to uh, her about her problem. Basically, uh, Patricia bought two recliners from uh, this place, and uh, the name of the place is Living Spaces, right? Correct. And what did she say? She had multiple problems with the elect- with everything, but the electrical one, or the one that was supposed to work on battery, still doesn't work. She wants either her money back or she wants a new one. And they have already replaced it once. So what what's going on, John, uh, Doc? Well, what happened was, is my mic on? Hey, hey, is he on the air? He's. Can you put him on the air? Thank you. Put him on the air. Thank you, Shannon. Okay. Anyway, um, she had. There's a number, but every time. What's she, that? What? Oh. What'd you say? Is he plugged in there? He's plugged in. I can in. hear. Yeah. We can hear. I can hear. Go He's ahead. Live. I don't know. Can is you he hear on me now? Here? Yes, I can hear you. Doc. Shannon. Okay. Just say yes, Shannon. If he's on. Okay. Thank okay. you. Go ahead, Doc. Anyway, I spoke to Patricia, yeah. and she said there's a general number that she calls. But nobody will tell her the manager of the store. But they gave her the customer service manager. Yeah. Well, let me finish. That's all you need, right? Who replied to her email one time. So I'm going to send him an email. Good. Rather than go through a phone tree and get right, nowhere. Right, 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 right. I it. have his email. Let me put your name down here, and, and we're going. Okay. What other followers do you have, Doc? Oh, remember we had a uh, a kid who called up. He went with his grandmother. The batteries plus. And they oh the out. hell I remember what was that about what was that about well they walked out with two batteries oh and no they, they walked out with one and he accused them of walking out with two right right I think it was two and four but whatever anyway. okay yeah but they charged him on his credit card twice right, and right. said he had two sets of batteries he said I only took one set of that correct one. well I got in touch with them we followed up on it and he went into the store yesterday. And got a refund for the two batteries that, was that. that he did not buy. No, are yes. you kidding? Give me the dinger, bro. What are you doing, Shannon? You're sitting on your ass. Give me. <laughs> Doc deserves the dinger. What are you doing? I don't know what's wrong with Shannon. Hey, I'm going to call him Mr. Shannon Biden from now on. <laughs> did you dinger me? Doc got money back for this kid. Doc called and got a refund. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Th- you, you know what? That's no kind of dinger, man. I don't even know what's going on with you. <laughs> I, I, can I put in? Can I put in a request for another board op? Kachina, Shannon, is is Friday or Monday or what? Tell me what's happening. Oh, you hate all. The- <laughs> Did you say that on the air? <laughs> okay, Charles. Oh, no, Jeff, what kind of car does he buy? First of all, let me ask you, Jeff, what do you think about my idea? And I, you don't have to agree with me, by the way. I, I'm just putting it out there. What did you think of my idea by a reasonable, great warranty new car for your daughter? Oh, it's, it's a great idea. I hadn't thought about it like that. And it, it makes sense that your um, repair costs in the long run on a used car might be more actually then it uh, might be the payment. but that's what i'm asking yeah. these guys about because really wh- what do you have to spend if you don't get a loan what do you have to spend oh i wanted to spend seven to ten grand okay you know what that that might get you guys could he get a reliable car that would last 10 years i'm saying no that's that's a tough one not for that price what no, do you think more tom yeah I think if he's going to try, try for like a 15 Corolla or something like that. That might get him to where he right. wants to be. And will and a Corolla right. will last. Well, there's still maintenance and repairs and stuff that you wouldn't have new. But yeah. Do you yeah. think if he took, right. let's say, 10 grand, because seven is out. Set, let's say he takes 10 grand and buys a car and wants to keep it for 10 years. Okay, let's do the math. Sure. And you hmm. put all the money into that. Because uh, how many miles would be on it to buy it for that? He has to have at least 70,000 miles. He'll need the better insurance. Huh? Well, okay, but he'll have about 70,000 70, miles, and he wants it to last 10 years, and he spends ten grand. Okay, so that's $1,000 a year mm-hmm. plus maintenance, as opposed to a new car where he puts down less than that and has a payment of what per year. Uh, you know, it's going to be... Uh, it's going to be how much? I think a little. I see. I don't think the used car will last. 
I think <laughs> no. even if you – I just don't think it will. But hmm. I think it would be less money if you could get a used car that would last, like a Corolla, if you could. But the problem is – what that used car gets you right now for that price is going to, am I right? I'm thinking 70,000 miles. Let's talk to Rodney. Rodney. Right at, sure. Hey, uh, Kachina, get Rodney on from JFR Cars. Jeff, we'll help you make some decisions here, but I know these guys will lean toward for longevity. It's not great. Of, it's not a great used car value, but for longevity, a Toyota or a Nissan or what about Subaru? No, yes. Subaru's there. Toyota's better. Yeah, yeah. That's far as longevity. For longevity, that, that that but they're not great used car values, mm -hmm. meaning they hold their value, so they're not great mm -hmm. used car values. But, but they may on. go the ten years, and they they will go the ten years, but probably without major repair if you can find one. So let's talk to JFR Cars and Rodney, and let's set you up, man. I'm glad you called before. Now, Charles, what's going on with you, Charles? You had a car sale go wrong. Um, and I don't remember what happened. Uh, oh, I remember, Charles. I'm sorry. <laughs> this this really pissed me off. And by the way, I found an attorney who said they might take this case. Charles, let me recap your yeah. problem. Let me recap yeah. your problem. And by the way, uh, this is another guy that threatened me as well. Um, he's going to really, really, really do something bad to me legally. not Not physically. He didn't threaten me physically, did he, uh, Kelly? The guy, the father of, uh, what's his name? You know what I'm talking about. This, The other guy wanted me to have a boxing match or kick my ass. Okay. <laughs> this is Charles. Charles is 79 years old, lost the use of his legs. He's in a wheelchair, and First Light Home Health Care sent a, a woman to him. Her name is Nay. And he talked about, she talked about she has to drive her dad's car. He says, my car's for sale. He had a 2013 Kia Optima with only 41,000 miles on it. Wow. And he said, my car's for sale. He claims he showed her the Facebook ad for 13500 She said, I'm going to come back tomorrow with my dad. She came back off duty from First Light Home Health Care. And the father counted out $1,300, $1,305. And Charles claims he was upset, and they argued a little, but he lost his memory. He was so upset and distraught wow. that he blacked out, and the next thing he knows, they bought the car for $1,300, and he signed over the title. I personally don't believe he blacked out. I don't think you black out like that because he remembers too much of that day. I think he's pissed off and embarrassed. I think they took advantage of him. And I do think he was intimidated. I think it was wrong no matter what. It was wrong because she was in a position of trust with home health care. And I don't believe had any business doing this. Mm -hmm. I found an attorney who, who has defended me and I can't even tell you how many times. We have kicked royal ass, and he said he would take this case. And Sue, both Nay and her dad, Richard, and First Light. Now, Charles, I don't know how bad you want to do this, but you you were screwed. I don't care how you look at it. You got 1300 They took advantage of you. How do you feel? Oh, I feel horrible. I'm distraught. I don't know what to do. You know, I just sit around all week. Charles, I want to go back to this because here's this guy, Richard, the father of Nay, said, we did nothing wrong. Now, by the way, how do I put this? Even if they did nothing wrong, it was wrong because she was in a position of trust yeah. with an older man and should have never had business dealings like this. But he claims, Richard, the dad claims, that he when he went there, he, it, they had no discussion at all about 13000 He never showed them the Facebook ad. She never saw the Facebook ad. And he kept saying thirteen five, and they thought it was $1,305. I think we can destroy him on the stand, by the way. Mm -mm. But that's what they're saying. So 
I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> I think the one thing I think is weak, and, and Richard, I, I mean, Charles, I want to help you. But I can't buy this blackout bit. In fact, when I was telling the story, I noticed Tom Maggio over there. Tom, with uh, hands-on auto tech, he was shaking his head. I, I discern you don't believe that blackout stuff. Well, I'm a disabled person. And for people who don't know, if you look at the camera, you'll... Oh, shoot. He just, did you just take off your leg? I, I'm just showing it up here. Yeah, I'm disabled, so... Is you it know, still on when you did that? Are I, you bending I have it? A feeling, no, yeah, I just turned it. You can swivel it. Oh, my yeah. God. That, yeah. That's so a freak you, out. If you're looking, and, oh and if you don't God. know, if you listen I'm on the radio... I'm saying, how the hell do you bend his foot like... His like <laughs> you okay. can see this show on Facebook. If yeah. you don't know that, on YouTube. And, uh, yeah, you're so, disabled. He's yeah. disabled, but, you know... And so I feel for him, because I worry about stuff like that. the blackout thing? Who he's 70 hold on he's 79 you know who knows the first thing that went through my mind is is are these people drugging him did they put something in a drink i um, think he i think he is he was distraught i thought he was intimidated and he's too embarrassed to admit it but yeah. i'm not trying to make you say that by the way charles i'm i'm but you truly don't remember the details right i i really don't uh you know and, and tom i don't i don't Remember having any blackouts either? I don't black out. Okay. Well, well, then what is it then? You literally I, signed the title and a, and a bill of sale. By the way, what's interesting is the bill. You remembered her presenting you with a bill of sale. You told me that, and the bill of sale was only four hundred dollars. Yes, and I, I sent a picture of, of the. That's. Uh, but why do you remember the bill file. of sale and not the title? I I didn't. I didn't remember. I was I was kind of going through my communication thread with Renee. Oh, and she texted and, it to you. And uh, yes, the the picture was there. Hey, and did the way, you send us those lie. documents? Did you send us t pictures of that? Yes, that's all I was saying. Okay. You you should have. No, no, I know we do. Kachina will keep it if we if you sent it. Yes, and 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 they have my license plates before I forget. You know, they're out there somewhere in my car and my license plates riding around. No matter how you look at it, come on. 2013 Kia Optima. Why did $1,300? This is the definition of taking advantage of somebody. Because obviously, thirteen fifty. you can't buy a car you can push for 1350 Have you called First Light, Charles? I mean, I, I'm, I'm, yeah, Charles, have you called First Light? I did early on, but I, I haven't since I talked to you. Okay. I want I want you to call him and say seriously. Here's what you, I want you to be nice about it, but I want you to say before you hire this attorney, he's going to do it pro bono. But before you engage this attorney, be very honest with them that you want to give them a chance to come through. Okay. Yes. You call me. Hey, Deputy Doc. No, I gave this to you, Doc. Did you call that place? Yes, I did. What did they? I, don't oh. you remember? I had a, a verbal battle going on with Richard. That's right. I mean, we had texts going back and forth where he was accusing me and yelling That's at me. That's right. He was yelling at you. But and did also, you call First Light? I spoke to First Light. They say basically, not my problem. She doesn't work here anymore. And that they're not responsible for something she did the following day after she was no longer an employee. No, no. See, they didn't fire her before she went there, they fired her after she went there. But they said so. She not, was right. an employee when she went there. But, she, it wasn't the scope of her employment, right. but she was an employee. Right. Sorry about Yeah, I got that mixed up. But, but they, they said. They fired her. Right. But and they I said, applaud them for that. Yeah, they said, not my problem. And they also said that the police investigated. Correct. All right. <laughs> Listen, man, this is bad. 303 713 talk. 303 713 8255. By the way, Grossman Wellness Clinic. Deputy Doc knows Dr. Terry Grossman very well. and uh, I've known him for years. He's a really good guy. He's a wellness expert. I mean, he's longevity and wellness. And I go there. And I've been going there for years. And I pay like, I, I think I got a couple programs. I'm paying like 300 and some. There's programs for all uh, price ranges, really. But the, here's the point. Everything's included. I get he, prescriptions and uh, supplements consultations and blood work you have a doctor at your call and and basically every three months you get blood work and what amounts to like a physical almost it's it's just amazing because nothing can go wrong grossman i just want to tell you about it 
Now they're a sponsor, Grossman Wellness. And I want you to consider going there. 249 bucks gets you the initial blood work and, and a consultation and exam. And I want to tell you this. There is no obligation. $249. That's it. At least find out where you stand for that. 303-233-4247. 303-233-4247. GrossmanWellness.com. Did Terry give you a copy of his two books? Years ago, I think. I think he did, yeah. Because he worked with, I'm trying to remember what the name of that famous futurist is that he worked with. I can't think of his name offhand. But he's also into that stuff. Hey, Kevin, who do you use for your phones? I have just a small independent guy that, yeah, you know, I'm kind of getting a little tired of. He's, oh, really? Yeah, he's he's good. He's smart. He's everything, but it's anytime you do, my guys won't call him. Every time you call him, it's gonna make you feel like you're stupid. Have you spoken? Who? My phone tech. So you have your own server or something or what? Yeah, basically, just yeah. My phones, you know. But I'm sure we could do better. But it's they're fine. Are you talking about phone work? Telephones. Oh, the telephones in the. What you can them? you can have you your own server now. Oh yeah. Inside your yeah, I use Comcast still, but so, yeah. I, I kind of had a fight with them and I was starting to poke around, but it just makes me nervous. Yeah. To... Well, my guy's a Comcast reseller, so it is a Comcast server. Oh okay. okay. That he's reselling to us. Uh, th- this guy. This guy with Red Automotive, just go to Sheridan Auto Tech for God's sakes. The guy that doesn't know, I scanned all the invoices. I, he didn't give them to me. Where are they? This email about the Red Automotive, he said I scanned everything, but I don't have them. Nine, oh, 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 man. What? This guy's a fucking nut. He has like six pages of blanks. What the? I can't hear you. My God in heaven. Okay, uh, now I see him. Jesus, God. <laughs> oh, okay. Can you hear me now? I can't hear you. At all? I okay. can hear you. I, you can hear her? Yeah. So hit it offline. Hit offline. I couldn't hear her. Okay, okay, I'm offline now. Okay, can you so hear me? I'm sorry, yes. Yeah. So six pages are blank, and then it's all the way at the bottom. <laughs> I see it. Yes. Yes. All right. Thank you. My God, he's just like, and and poor guy. I want, I want, I want uh, Kevin to look at oh, this. First can you print? Invoice, it says his oil was empty. Can you print it? Can you print it for me? Uh, I can send it to. He has the email uh, pulled what, up. What here. am I doing? Kevin, which, which case is this, Tom? I can send it to Janet. Maribel. Okay. Thanks. I don't know We're going to print it out. It's sideways. We'll print it out, bro. We'll print it out. Yeah, it's, it's a little pain right, to Shana, say, but the first thing you read, oil level is checked, right? added five mm, quarts of oil. The engine was I'll completely go, empty. I'll go get it. No, no, he's not, cl- he's not claiming. Well, he's not complaining about the repair. What he's saying is, well, he is. the one, But that's after the guy, okay, the guy took it in for repair. Am I? Am I? Why are you not in here? Minutes. Okay, he here's what he did. Yeah, he said right. he brought it in all the for way at the repairs. So they did his timing chain. Like, that report all is after he did his timing chain. Everything went to hell, and then he took it there, and that's the report. So yes, it did fuck him up when he went to the when he went. So but that's that he's not complaining about, about that shop. I just wanted to see Which what shop that, is he complaining about. Well, no. Sh- the first shop, he's what's going to take first shop? the first shop. He, he didn't what's give it, me anything because they did a timing chain on a bunch of shit and Keith? and it all fell apart. The timing chain broke and did damage. Hey, he's Keith, suing them in small claims court. They, we're not going after them. Right, what we're trying to do funny. is figure out this. It's going to cost him nineteen hundred dollars to fix it. But I'm wondering, do you put nineteen hundred dollars into it or is the engine shot? Because this dealer told him the engine was shot. And it's not worth putting money in, whereas the other dealer says, no, it's running fine. We just have to do this, this, and this. 
So I don't know who's telling the truth. This is the first dealer I believe he took it to, and I don't know where the report is from the second dealer. The guy's confused. He knows nothing about cars, and I wanted Kevin to look. Oh, no, not Kevin, because he's in Colorado Springs. Jesse. Jesse over at Honest Accurate Auto. I think the first dealer is just being safe. No oil, this, that, this, timing changes. Get rid of it. Don't even try. The second dealer says, we'll fix it, but go trade it in right away. No, that was the oh, that was shot. the bad guy. That's that right. That was the bad guy. Yeah, but he's the one who said he modified the camshaft. Can you imagine modifying? I don't even know what that means. How do you modify a camshaft? Isn't it hard? How do you modify? I, I, it's rigged, is what he's saying. You know, there's some redneck engineering going on. All right, I'm getting. I'm back. I'm on. Hi. Hi, Tom Martino here, 303-713-TALK, 713-825. I'm going to go to Rodney over at JFR Cars. Hey, Rod, um, I want to ask you a couple questions for Jeff. Jeff is asking for his 19-year-old daughter. And, you know, we always have this discussion, Rod, whether to buy a new car, put the money down that you have to spend for a used car on a new car and have some low payments, relatively low payments, for three, five years, and then be done with it, and you have a new car preferably a Kia or a Hyundai or something with a 10-year warranty, or buy a good used car. So here's what we're asking you. He's got about 10 grand to spend. Let's say he puts seven down on a car, on a new car, or he takes that seven to 10 on a used car. Could he buy a decent used car that would last his daughter 10 years of driving? Remember, we're buying it used for about 10 grand. What does he get used because, Jeff, the reason I'm asking Rodney, he's not going to put you together and do one of these deals where you're overpaying and underwater, okay? He's just never going to do that to anyone. So, Rodney, what do you say? What would you buy for your daughter if you wanted to attempt to make it last 10 years for about 10 grand? And if it's not possible, it's, just tell us. And that's what I'm it, – they're hard, they're hard to find good – under ten thousand dollar cars is just hard. If we found a, a nice Kia or a Hyundai, a Toyota, and you're talking about a two thousand and ten or eleven Toyota Camry or Corolla that might work, or or Toyota or Honda, those are your cars that I'm looking for 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 an eighteen year old for eighteen thousand. Um, I'm for eight for eighteen year old, but. If if you can put the ten thousand down and you don't mind a payment, I'm with you, Tom. That says get a little Kia that you can buy and um yep. and then let her hold that for ten years. Yep. And the, she's uh, no maintenance. Uh, and I'm not any maintenance, but no 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 repairs. Just a little bit of maintenance for ten years. That's so. exactly right. That's a, that's <laughs> what I'm thinking. But um, if you want, can you can you source um a new Kia for him at the same or better price than he can get at a dealer, or should he go direct to a dealer, uh, Rodney? Um, let me let me do, let me uh, check that on what kind of specials the Kia has. Because I think but, we got know, some the, still, the we still have some brand new under $20,000. Okay, okay. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing some, I'm dealer. seeing some here, some really nice little cars under ten grand. Not Excuse me. I, I mean, under. I'm sorry. Yeah. Under twenty grand. Okay. Okay. And I, what I and I'm talking about just to see if there's any rebates or dealer cash or anything like that. No. No. I know. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I just picked so up the uh, I can Scout definitely uh, jump on that for him and just see if that's the way he wants to go. But if he's going to find a ten thousand dollar car, I'm going to keep you in that uh, Asian market. That's what I'm going to keep you in. You know this brand new Kia. This brand new Kia Soul is selling for about nineteen thousand. And then we have some. There are some even cheaper. I'm trying to find them here. I'm, I'm scrolling through the Elantra, some. In the, the Elantra might be a little cheaper. The the um, um, the the Kia 
is a little bit cheaper. So there's some cars out there that would fit the bill. You have the, I like Kias a lot. Uh, My daughter has an Elantra. She loves it. But I would have gone Kia had I known. I don't know why I'm saying that. They, I, I just hear better things about Kia than Hyundai. Yeah. Well, they're, they're virtually the same company. But, yes, they're one in the same company. Um, uh, uh, Hyundai actually bought Kia years and years. Oh, ago. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. So All right. Well, thank you. I listen. All I'm saying is, is I think that he can do way better doing it this way. And I want him to uh, check it out. So, Jeff, I'm going to give you Rodney's contact. Are you still there, Jeff? Yeah. I'm going to give you Rodney's yeah, Rodney's information. Um, okay. It's JFR Cars. Now. It's a great place. There are a lot of there are a lot of but there are a lot of people there. So talk to Rodney, okay? Okay, I'll do it. Man, this I can't believe some of these. Uh, I, I just can't believe some of these prices. That they're good prices on these Kias, and they look really nice. Little little SUVs, man. I, I mean, I really yeah. think you. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised here on what you can buy. And they're all wheel drive. Yeah, they're all wheel drive. Little SUV, little SUVs, and um, they they look really cute. And also, uh, if you put like seven grand down, man, you're gonna have a pretty low payment. So yeah. anyway, uh, I'm gonna let you go. Thank you. Let me know how it goes. I gotta I gotta hang up on Rodney there. I didn't mean that, Rodney. Thank you very much. And um, I'm just trying to drop these damn calls. It's my. Don't don't give me any Biden jokes, Shannon. I'll come over there. 303-713-TALK, 713-8255. Hello. Um, so okay, I'm with on my Charles, way. I, I gave him some instructions on what to do. I'm done with Charles. I want him to go to that uh, First Light Home Health Care and talk to them. Then we have Deputy Dollar. He has a follow-up. Go ahead. Deputy Dollar is right here. Thank you for waiting, Deputy Dollar. What's happening? Did you solve something? The the cat poisoning. Explain that to me. So the city of La Junta. Oh, the guy that called. That's right. He called and said that the city of La Junta is actively encouraging the shooting and poisoning of cats. He sounded almost a little nutty. And I said, look, we'll look into it. I mean, you know, he said it's been going on. Cat lovers are mad. Uh, they're not just feral cats. They, he says they go after everyone. What was his first name? John. John. Okay. So anyway, did you investigate that, Dollar? Well, I have a call into the uh, animal department, at city of La Junta. Yeah. I have a call into the mayor. It's a pretty small town. Yes, it is. And I did find that. In 2022, the city passed an ordinance about not feeding these these feral cats, um, keeping garbage, you know, in the proper containers, so it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't aggravate the problem. And that may be what he's referring to. I haven't heard back from the mayor's office. Um, okay, I think what he was real purpose for calling his show. He wants us to do like an investigation uh, into some of this practices, but everything I've come across, it's just the city seems to be within their rights. They're just trying to do control this cat population. Okay, and and they're ta- but they're not talking about killing them. <laughs> I ha- according to John, he says he has several witnesses that will claim that cats are being poisoned uh, until I get a response All right. from the mayor. Yeah, office, well, good. I'm glad, you're, I'm glad you're looking into it, though. All right, anything else, right. Dollar? Well, we got the lady, Julie, with the Walmart gift cards. Yeah, that was crazy. That was a crazy one. What's going on with that? a crazy one. And I think at the end of the day, I'm going to – I've been thinking about it. She's done virtually everything possible. She's gone to the store. She's talked to management. She what what happened? Service. What happened to those gift cards? Well, it's it's kind of strange to me, but you go into the store and you buy these cash cards, the Walmart cash card. You put money on them, and then when they get activated, you're sent a a Mastercard, 
a green dot, which is part of the Walmart system, but you get this green dot. So what, it, what, what is her claim? What's her first name, by the way? I'm looking for her call. Her name is Julie. What was her, her claim was what? That she's not getting what she paid for? She bought three cards, two with $500 each, and a third one with $400. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And then when one, she, she got, said one of them is a problem. It will not, it says it's already used, right? That's correct. And I think the, the representative was an error, not an error, but divulged too much and said, yeah, it was used at Outback Steakhouse for $399.99. But she didn't but do it. No. And he wouldn't say, oh, it was in this city on this day. Like, so, okay, okay, we need to get that information. I mean, she has a right to know that if she says it's a fraudulent charge. But they don't work like, cre- they don't work like credit cards where you can just dispute it? Well, I know dollar's not a hoax, but it is. It's, I think it's slightly different, even though that the card's a, a master you can't, card. You can't dispute it, Tom. It's a cash card. You right. can't dispute it. Once it's, it's, once it's used, card. it's used. So and then no she, she, I'll tell you what happened. Somebody went in there and stole that card and put, you know, um, scraped it off and redid it. You know, gift cards, you can't buy gift cards anymore. You can't. I, I, you just can't buy them anymore. I, I, I'm sorry, but you can't. That, that's the bottom line. Thank you for looking into that. I'm Tom Martino. More coming up. This. It's such a big scam. I got caught up on this, and it, they just were over their heads in the initial repair. Yeah, they shouldn't have even attempted it. Okay, <clears throat> and then the second anal, anal, they analyzed that that dealer, right? The Chevy dealer they analyzed it. Yeah. they're spot on. I think. Okay, good. I'm going to yeah. talk to you about it. If you can yeah. read that, I'm going to agree. Yeah. yeah, and and so Reds is the initial bad guy. He went to Reds for an oil change. Two thousand miles later, it was out of oil. Right, right, right. And he went back to Reds. Got it. Yeah. And then, then went to the That's dealer. when the chain was broken. Reds tried to fix the chain, screwed up, so he went to the other cool. dealer. Cool. How long do we have? I, I have to do a spot right here. And then we're gonna... I'm going to sneak up. You have time enough to get a slice of pizza. Oh, you have, to, you have time to get pizza yeah. from here. You want me to bring you a slice? Nah. That freaked me out when he, he bent his leg like that. <laughs> All right, I got it. You know, I love Lazy Days RV because they have great deals. LazyDays.com. Whether you have a newer used RV or you want to buy a newer used RV, you can trade in your RV and get great prices. Plus, they have a service center up at I-25 and exit 240. It used to be Century RV. You know what? Here's the message. If you're looking for selection, you won't find more. Then LazyDays.com. And great prices. They'll even buy your used RV. LazyDays.com. Look, everyone wants a safe, conservative investment. If that's the case, I want you to check out Joe Keanu at MyMoneyMyWay.com. 303-779-6600. It is guaranteed, guaranteed, to be no loss on the principal or gain and a guaranteed return along with a guaranteed income for life. Please check it out. It is possible. MyMoneyMyWay.com. Thank you. You don't eat this stuff? Yeah, I'm just not hungry today. I normally do. So where's your shop, Tom? Up in Longmont, right off of I-25. And? Uh, 119. Okay, is it near Route 7? Um, Because I go play golf up there at uh, yeah, so Colorado if you're, Golf Club. If you're heading from here, if you're heading north up I-25, yeah. you turn uh, left on the 119, right? Past 7, past 5.5, you're going to make a left on 3.5. 
And I'm in there with all those dealerships and everything. Okay. Yeah. It was like they built an autoplex up there. Did that? Mm. A lot of dealers, a lot of car repair places, yeah. That, that's good for your business, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. We, uh, we've gone under a pretty good rap. You look at my Yelp and it's five stars across the board. Oh, that's great. Yeah, and that's hard to do. Yelp is the real deal, you know. But uh, but we're small, so I don't need a lot of a lot of traffic, you know. I got two techs, and we just take in what we can handle, and that's it, you know. Yeah, I had a small practice too. I was in practice by myself yeah. for forty years. I had the same staff for about twenty five of those forty years. Yeah, and my patients loved it that they could come in and see the same people all the time. And it's nice that you got your finger on the pulse of everything that goes on, you know? Right. It helps you keep the quality up. And Exactly. Yeah. I, I, I'm a little nervous that, you know, I think about getting bigger, and then I'm like, I just, I don't want to sacrifice the quality that we put out just for an extra buck or two, you know? It ain't worth it. Yeah. Man, this stuff is pure grease. Holy cows. So you were a doctor? Yeah, I was an OBGYN for 40 years. Oh, no kidding. <laughs> You've seen a lot. <laughs> I did see a lot. Yeah. Probably gets old after a while. What? Probably gets old after a while. No. Yeah. The only thing that got old was the time that, you know, you, you know, with most, most things you can schedule, you can't schedule when women go into labor. So, you know, I could be up all night with a patient and have to go to the office and do surgery and then another patient goes into labor. So my time was never my own. That was the biggest problem. Yeah. There's a joke about a, the OBGYN, and he goes to the mechanic school to learn how to work on cars for a change of pace. And um, so everybody's taking the end of, end of the test. they got to rebuild an engine, and everybody's taking it. And they, the first guy leaves, his engine's built. The next guy leaves, his engine's built. And hours are going by, and it's almost midnight, and the OBGYN finally has an engine built. And, and the guy says, uh, I, I'm sure I, pa I failed. It took me too long. He goes, no, you passed. But nobody's ever done it through the intake before. <laughs> Hi, Tom Martino. You're a troubleshooter. 303-713-TALK. 713-8255. Welcome to the show. ProBid Energy for your solar systems complete at 21000 after tax rebates, that's with battery backup. I'm serious. That's a that's a solar system. ProBidEnergy.com, people we know and trust, not just for sales, but for service and installation. ProBidEnergy.com. Welcome, Keith, to the show. We, uh, we have wide open lines after Keith at 303-713-TALK, 713-8255. Today is car day. We can talk about cars or anything you want. So, Keith, what's going on, man? Hey Tom, I'm just wondering how. Where do you find out information on the on how legitimate or or safe it is to buy gold and silver coins from these guys that call you? Okay, I, I just um, want to tell you something. Coincidentally, I walked in today, and some nut walks up to me and says, "Open up your hand. I want to show you something." And he drops in my hand ten grand worth of gold, little tiny coins, beautiful coins, maple leaf, and I said, and I said. Where'd you get these? He says, I'm, I, I have them. I have gold. And I said, okay. And we talked about it. And he says, uh, it's, you know, I don't have a lot of gold, but I have a lot. I mean, I have some. And I asked Kevin, do you have gold? And Kevin said, no. So this guy wants to talk about it. He's welcome to talk about it, but I'm not going to call you, you him. You got to go somewhere you can trust. You got to go to a local coin store somewhere you can trust. These guys that are calling you. Where did Out you buy? Blue? Okay, I'm just going to say you were the nut. Where'd you buy your stuff? <laughs> I like Erie Gold and Silver, little little coin shop up in Erie. No but sales they're not tax. collectibles. You're just buying gold. They have both. They have collectibles. Okay, but I'm, but, I'm just but, buying. But I'm, do, yeah. Are you looking for Keith? Collectibles or gold? Uh, um, I'm looking for it as an investment. Really. Okay, as an investment, it's a bad investment. Well, okay, that's a, that's a matter of opinion. I personally sure. think so too. It's a matter of opinion. However. As an investment, one of the problems you have is if you check the spot price of gold today, 
right before you buy it. You're not going to find that price because that's a wholesale, I mean, not wholesale, but that's the spot price. And, and if you go to one of these coin shops that have these coins, a one ounce coin, it's going to be more than that. Mm -hmm. So, so you're going to start ask and a premium. Yeah. yeah so yeah. you're going to start, start right out with a deficit. It's, it's not a big deficit, but it's a deficit. Now you have to take the appreciation of that gold and take a, let's take a five year period, take appreciation of that gold over five years. And then you have to divide, you have to subtract, um, subtract the premium from it divided by that five years. There's a mathematical equation. And what that gets you is your yield. And your yield won't be as good as a bond. I mean, I mean, what I'm saying is, but then you might think a bond is paper, gold is gold. And that's why people invest in gold. It's not so much that it outperforms, it's that it will be there. That's what they believe, it will be there. It's a hedge. It never goes down to zero is what they say. And they also say you can hold it in your hand right. and it's not a piece of paper backed by a corporation but, like, a, like a bond. But right now, gold is at uh, very, very high. I, I know. It's at 21. All time highs, yeah. All time yeah. highs. So, so you don't want to buy it now. No, no. It, it's, but he, his question, back to his original question, how do you buy it? Well, you know who was selling and, it and, for a good price? Costco. Come on. Yeah. yeah. Oh, they yeah. were selling the maples and they I were selling gold Costco bars. I would say Costco would be a legit place to go then, for sure. Yeah. For damn sure. The price is good and you know you could trust them. Well, what I'm looking at... Are is, you kidding uh, me? They sell raw well, gold. Yes. They sell the, yeah. the Canadian, the leaves. Pamp, pamp bars. The leaf. when, you buy that, when, you, yeah. when you buy that maple leaf, it's not considered a collectible, right? Because I don't want to pay a premium it's for... It's a coin. It. Yeah. I understand There's that. There's a difference but. between bullion... Which okay. might be it's a collectible bullion cheaper. and a coin. Bullion is, sometimes cheaper, unless it has mm -hmm. like, say it has Star Wars on it, then you're right. paying for the, the licensing, right? Exactly. So then it's a collectible, you're paying more. Yeah. Well, coin, you don't want to. So right I'm now, for, right like now the ounce is, is coin. the ounce is 21.35 today per ounce. But, but a lot of these coins go up in value because they're a, 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 like an old mint, right? Yeah, but that's not okay. They it, can. You're looking at two different things. One is investment, and one is collection. Collection can be an investment, but you don't do it for that. The because here's why: the spot price of gold, no one's going to dispute at all ever. So you can sell it for the spot price, no matter what. When it comes to collectibles. The value is in the eye of the beholder. You have to find a willing buyer. It's not a set value. You can't depend on it. Will you get money? Yes. But if someone's desperate to sell it, you get less. If you wait, you get more. It's not as the same as gold as an investment, Keith. Two different things. So I'm better off buying gold bullion, like a, like yes. a bar. That would be the silver. best. That would be the best, right, if you're going to buy for investment. Because you're not paying any pre, well, you are going to pay a premium because you got to go through a dealer, but you're the, not going. The to... The only benefit about coins is that they're hard to fake; they're harder to mm -hmm. counterfeit. Because yeah. then you're, you're well, looking at you federal to, yes. charges. So. Obviously, you have to have a test to make sure it's real gold. But so that's his question again: Where do you buy bullion? Where do you buy it? Does it? I, yeah, same I, place, Erie Gold and Silver, or or wherever you can find a local coin shop that is not going to charge you sales tax. You got to watch that too. You'll pay sales tax at some of these places. Now, I just asked my expert, ChatGPT, and they're saying bullion you can actually buy from banks, some banks and financial institutions. There are actual um, uh, auction sites. There are bullion shows. And there are uh, online dealers and local uh, stores, local coin shops. Even though you want bullion, they carry that too. Mm -hmm. And in all of these, every one of these, you pay a premium. Yep. So, but, and that's the difference between that and paper investments. Paper, you know, if you go to the, go the government, I love government bonds. I love T-bills. Every penny I have that I don't need for emergency, if it's not in my hedge fund or in my investment accounts, it is in my, it is in T-bills, all T-bills, because it's a guaranteed right now five point something percent and it sits there until I need it and it's liquid as hell. So just remember, 
while gold is wonderful, is it liquid? Um, Tom, when you're holding that, that, that 10 grand in your, in your hand, how fast can you get 10 grand? That's what I want to know. Hold on. It depends on what happens to the price of gold. Well, sure. There's a, there's a coin store on Colorado Boulevard that's been in business for years and years. That's a reputable, excellent coin and gold dealer. Was it with Kachowski still doing the I, I don't know, but I just, because I, I went there to buy some jewelry. Tom, it's nice to have you here, man. Yeah, I always enjoy being here. Thanks for having me. They've, Costco's already sold over $100 million in gold. Yeah, they, they made so much money. They it's made like it killing. Like they're, they're trustworthy. The, only thing the Art of Granite will get you a price on the phone for your countertops. What do I mean by the Art of Granite? I mean the Art of Countertops. They call them granite, but they're countertops. And what I love about them is... They will give you a price on the phone, not just for granite, but for quartz, marble, quartzite, any kind of material you want. They'll do. And what I love is they give you prices on the phone. Tear out and haul away is always free. And the bathroom vanity is free when you have the kitchen done, or you can get a free kitchen sink. So here you go. Theartofgranite.com. Call right now for your price. The only people I know that give prices on the phone. 303-386-5919. 303-386-5919. Hey, I love K&H Home Solutions. You know, all of these sponsors, yeah, they pay to be on the radio, but I'm going to tell you something. They can't pay me ever if I don't love them. I know them. K&H, I've been representing the whole time in Colorado. And what, what K&H is, is a home improvement company for uh, roofing, uh, gutters, siding, windows, doors, and everything you want on the outside of your house. But they can also do now bathrooms, bathroom remodels. Call them. They're dependable. And they've been around one of the oldest home improvement companies in Colorado. Call them for anything to do with your bathroom remodel. 303-421-7100. 421-7100.khwindows.com. All right. I'm going to go finish. I don't, you know, Biden just looks so old. Yeah. I mean, I'm 79, and I don't think I look as old as... Uh, no. And certainly my, my mental state's a hell of a lot better than his. Would you consider a position like that at this stage of your life? Uh, well, if I were president, I'd, you know what I would do? I would I'd do it for six months, and then I'd be impeached because of all the changes I would make. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I think, you know what drives me crazy? That when... When 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 Trump came in, he voided I don't know how many of Obama's executive orders. Then when Biden came in, he vacated about a hundred and something of. And now, if Trump comes in, he's. I mean, there has to be some continuity yeah. or some way to either keep them or. It just seems crazy to me that it keeps going back and forth. As to what you can and cannot do. Do you ever serve on a board? No. No. So I've served on two boards now. And what I've learned is that when you have some, some sort of rotation of people that have to work on big projects, boy, does it screw things up. I mean, even the big project in the one board I served on was rebuilding the dams in a community in the mountains where the dams had washed out during the mm. big flood of 13, right? And every other year, they almost had to start from scratch because the new board members were coming in, the old were leaving, the new board members want to solve every problem, and they don't realize that the old board members have hashed these problems out over the course of two years. And, you know, so you're, you're spending six months just getting everybody caught up to date mm -hmm. on everything that we've already dealt with. I can't imagine what it's like swapping presidents every four years. And You're also, probably spending one year just getting him caught up to date. And also, if you talk to any representative, 
they'll say they spend three quarters of their time trying to get contributions and raising money yeah. and not legislating. Yeah. It's, it's just a bad system. I mean, and I don't know how you would fix it. Well, what I would do, I would keep the president at two terms, make the senators one 10 year term and make the House of Representatives one five year term. That's that would be my solution. So when, when I'm king, that might help. when I'm king, that's what I'm going to do. There you go. President two eight years. Senate gets elected for one ten year term. That's it. And House members one five year term. That's a good. That's a good point. That would solve so many problems. Hey, I'm Tom Martino, your troubleshooter. Let's go right to Mar- uh, Brad. And Mark, I'm going to take you. Just hang on. You have an engine issue. Go ahead. Your E350. Uh, What's an E350? That's a, uh, that's a Ford van. Oh, it's a van. Okay. Go ahead, sir. What's going on? Uh, well, last night I was driving. To, uh, it's a food truck. So I was driving to work. And it started making noises on the way home. It completely died on me. I just uh, brought it into my local mechanic, and they said it's completely shot. I need a brand new engine. Okay, what's going on? What ha- what happened? The question I always have is when it starts making noises on the way into work. What what were you thinking when you decided to drive it back home? Like what? First of all, did an oil light come on or something to tell you not to drive? Uh, it was a blinking engine light. What? Yeah. So when it's blinking like that, did he ruin his engine? Can you save your engine when that he happens? He may have, yeah. Or I'm maybe not sure he blew why it. he could have blown. I think the best public announcement is stop driving when something like that happens. Hold on a second, though, Brad. We'll analyze it to make sure you get an honest answer. And then Mark has an issue with an all-wheel drive 96 Subaru. Ba- 96? That and more coming up on the Troubleshooter Show. Get your calls in, 303-MARTINO, 303-627-8466. Okay. You ask those dumb questions, too, huh? Why we play, do you keep driving? Yeah. I just want to, I want to know what goes through the brain, you know? Yeah. Oh, you only got five more miles. Out of coolant. You know, mm-hmm. temperature pegged. Rattling like a container of marbles. I only got five more miles. <laughs> that all the time. You know what my biggest bugaboo was? I'd get a call at night from one of my patients husbands and they say my wife is having some spotting bleeding or she's having whatever it is i say well when did it start hey honey when did it start and the wife is right next to them yes. and yet they won't let her talk to me so i can ask her direct questions and she knows what the issue is like and it would just drive me up the well, fucking road our business, so our business it's the opposite the guy will have the wife call, and you can hear him in the right phone. in the background. Yeah, and I always ask her. I said, "Would you just put him on the phone?" Exactly, because this is getting annoying. Now, my wife has um, the condition where she can't talk to people on the phone. Okay, she she can't order pizza, nothing, right? And so I I am that guy in that situation. It's not me not letting her. Sure, it's her not wanting yeah, that, to. That's and making one out of me, a thousand. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, she can't even talk to her doctor on the phone. Yeah, that's bad. I mean, my wife has their own bank account as well as our combined. And I hear about these guys that only give them allowances and stuff. And, yeah, there's some really controlling, you know. She controls herself. You know? And sometimes she'll say to me, can I buy something? I'm like, you don't have to. I don't know why you think you have to ask me, well, you know. Well, reason, you make you know, the money. Just have the conversation. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, yeah. No, oh, there's there's guys like that though, the the male chauvinist kind of thing. Oh yeah, yeah. No, but there's there's women like that too. Because my girlfriend does that on occasion to me. Yeah. Yeah. You know, she'll call me up and say, "Hey, my son just had a baby, and they wanted one of those new strollers that fold in with car seats in the top open." Yeah. Five hundred, six hundred dollar car seat stroller. Yeah, oh yeah. We just had a baby. I get it. Yeah. 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 We're doing Dave Ramsey now. Have you heard of him? Yeah. yeah. So that, that is really good because it has built more communication between us. Now we talk about everything financial, which I enjoy. I didn't like being the one that had to 
be responsible for the big stuff and the house bill and all that. It's nice to have her in the picture and sharing all of that, you know. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a different. Yeah. You have to find out where it's coming from, though. You know, there might be something in the past that. Yeah. Well, there's guys that are just chauvinists. Like, yep. the fellow that helped me get my start at my shop was one. Because I taught my wife how to work on cars. We built a shop out in Philadelphia together. So she was in the shop with me, helping me. And he would look. And he's like, she shouldn't be in the shop, you know? And she could, he had hired a bunch of know-nothing cheap guys. She could run circles around them, you know? One guy, one guy comes into my office one day. And he goes, will you come answer this dispute you know, so he pulls me out, and he goes, I think it's an alternator. She says it's a power steering pump. I'm like, you better start listening to her. She knows what she's doing. <laughs> That's your power steering pump, you know? Who's his wife? <laughs> that was my wife, oh. yeah. That was my wife. She was working in the shop, <laughs> and one of the young mechanics tried to tell her right. <laughs> tried to tell her it was an alternator. She's like, no, that's the power steering pump. But yeah, she's, she's, a, she's a strong woman, good woman. I think most most men who are, who are comfortable with themselves like to marry intelligent women. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my ex-wife did so much of my practice. I mean, I took care of the medicine. She did everything else. You know, we had some nurses, but the, a lot of the business part she took care of. Yeah, I that's how we started. I didn't have a check. I didn't cash a check for like 25 years. She was trying to write the tickets and do the invoicing and the bills, but she she wasn't wrapping her head around the numbers too great. So I said, all right, well, let me write this real quick. You help me out. Take out this bolt and this bolt, you know? And I figured, all right, that'll just kind of get her out of my hair for 30 minutes, 40 minutes. She came back two minutes later. I'm like, what do you mean you're done? I'm like, all right, well, then take out this round, you know? I'm like, that'll keep her busy for 30 minutes. Three minutes later, she comes back. So finally, I'm like, all right. Finished taking the entire intake off this Mustang. And she had it off in like 15, 20 minutes. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, you're a natural. You're, you're made for this. Yeah. So, Kev, wouldn't you love to see a president get up there and say, um, before I begin my speech today, I'd like to remind you not to interrupt with applause. I will finish my speech, and then if you like it, you can applaud. If you don't like it, you can boo. Well, if it was a real speech, yeah. It doesn't matter. I mean, just I think Obama said that once, didn't he? They were near practicing and standing up. Oh, yeah. 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 I love that. Food and housing costs skyrocketed under Biden. U.S. economy adds 275,000 jobs, beating forecasts. Well, everybody that, had to get a second, third job to pay the No, no, but I'm saying, look at that. The no, difference. The difference, the difference in the take between uh, CNN and MS and uh, Fox. Fox. Yeah. Um, as Rush used to call it PS, PS, wait, he used to call it PMS, PMS. <laughs> what about? Wait, it's M, what, what's MS? What, what's the MSNBC? Little, okay, MSNBC. He called it PMS NBC or something. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I listened to it because I wanted to see what Biden had to say, but I was so annoyed by the constant standing up and applauding business. Fucking stupid. It's so stupid. And Kamala, uh, she just gets under my skin.
Bible Shooter Show. Now, Tom Martino. Hi, Tom Martino, your troubleshooter, 303-713-TALK, 713-8255. This just in, really just in for my one of my sponsors, Main Water Lines, pressure in the home toilets, sinks, garbage disposals, sump pumps. If we can get to it, we will inspect it. Residential, single-family homes, and a sewer camera, camera inspection all free. free free now listen folks this is just in now i checked to see it's real it's from garrett over at 888heating.com now you can trust those guys i mean they do the high efficiency stuff now i'm going to give you a number and i swear to god he's texting me this so you can say tom t- tom told me we're going to check all the main water lines check the pressure the toilet sinks, garbage disposal, sump pumps, anything we can get to, we will inspect, including sewer camera inspection, all free. Ladies and gentlemen, maybe my reputation is, this is Garrett. I mean, I said, Garrett, are you sure? He says, yes. I just texted him. Is this true, Garrett? Is this all free? And he just texted me back, yes. I'm serious. I'm re- You know, I'm reading this live, right? No repairs are included. But all the inspections with no obligation, if anything is wrong, there will be quotes, but there is no obligation. And that's it. That sewer free. line inspection alone a free, is a couple no, no, hundred No, 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 I know. Free. Everything's free. Wow. This entire inspection. If you're having any plumbing issues, even if you just want to get a list of what's wrong, hold on. He just said, uh, yep, they're all ready to go. Now I'm going to give you the number for this free plumbing inspection, including uh, sewers. And there's no obligation. Three, I like it just because you get a list. Even if you get a list and you don't want to do you the repairs. You have to do it all now, too. Now, now, he may not like me saying this, but you don't have to get the repairs. But you, you at least know what's up. Sure. And I'd love to know. I once asked, like, what if I had a bad toilet, bad this or bad that? I, I don't know that. I mean, all the time, right? Anyway, here it is. 888heating.com. 303-770-2776. Man, you want, see, I love doing screaming deals. You never get more screaming than, than free, okay, from a good company. 303-770-2776, completely free. Now, let's talk real quick here to Brad again. Brad, the engine issue, FE50. Here's what we want to know. You're driving the food truck, and what happened? Give us the scenario. You're driving, and what happens? You were having no issues up to this point. Is that right, Brad? Correct. So you're driving along. Da, 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 da. What happened? That's my driving music. Loud, Go ahead. Out grinding or a like a clicking noise at first. Okay, a so clicking noise. Be, okay, then what? Be like on up hills. Like basically, it was it was, it was downshift into third gear, and then it was a kind of thing, kind of grinding clicking noise. Okay, but first, you heard click 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 fast or click right. click click. Okay, fast, right? Yeah. And then you heard. Click, 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 and it downshifted. Well, yeah, it downshifted the third when I was going up a hill, like heading oh, down this Oh, okay, path and when it downshifted and the RPMs increased, uh, you felt, uh, did the, don't they increase with the downshift? Then you felt a grinding. Right. Guys, what happened? If you had to give it your best guess, what happened? Come on, Tom. He's missing oil. Yes, first thing. Okay, he ran out of oil. Yeah, no oil pressure. Now, did an oil light come on? No. The he, engine light second. started blinking, right? Any gauges? Right. When the engine no, light no. started blinking, that engine tells you blinking. to... Pl- huh? Yeah, engine light started blinking, but no gauges were uh, activated at all. Well, what gauges around. do you have in that car? Oil gauge, fuel, uh, RPMs. Why gauge. wouldn't the <laughs> oil gauge show something? A lot of times... A light. A lot of times it's it's too far gone by the time the light comes on. It, it'll maintain enough pressure to it, keep it off, and as soon as it drops below, it's... Once it stopped, did the oil pressure go down? Yes. Because the engine stopped, right? Right. Just before the engine stopped, did the pressure go down? Uh, not that I remember. When did you... Oh, but you drove it back to the station, right? So I got it all the way to to where I was the brewery I was heading to. That so evening. when it was grinding, how did you drive it? 
Uh, slowly. <laughs> and when you drove slowly, did the grinding go away? Yes. How did it sound normal? Only, yes, it sounded fairly normal. It sounded normal when I was when I was not in like when I didn't downshift in the third gear going uphill. So as long okay, as he kept his foot off it and didn't really push too hard, he didn't hear the noise. So then you right. you and about how fast would you say you were traveling? Uh, when it started, it was I was probably going around uh, sixty five ish. No, when you and drove then, uh, to the place, you said you had to go to this one place you were on your way to. Well, he made it to the so he made it. I mean, he sold a bunch of food. Now it got worse when he okay. left. How so did with, you make it home? How many? That's what I'm asking. How many total miles did you drive uh, after the grinding? From, oh, with just the grinding, it was uh, no. Maybe after the grinding. Five. I don't mean co- how many miles did you right. drive while it was five grinding? How many? Okay, five. from the first indication of those clicking, how many miles did you drive before getting to the repair shop? Less than five miles. So there was only a mile or so to your food destination and then a mile or so to the shop, or did you go home? A mile or so until it died on the side of the road. So you had to have a toad to the shop? Correct. Okay. He starved his engine and seized it, wouldn't you say, guys? More than likely, yeah. Uh, So what are you calling about? You want to know about the engine or what? I just want to know. I got a quote, and I was wondering if it was a fair quote. quote. What's the quote? Uh, the total after labor and everything is 12,481. That's about right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Especially in a van. A lot of yeah. extra labor. Pretty fair. Is that a reman or a used? It should be reman uh, for that. According to them, it's new. Yeah. But nothing's it new. Like... It's not new. Re- that's reman. Yeah. yeah. New would okay. be 20, 22, 23,000 new. Mm-hmm. Okay. Although the dealers have been getting competitive. I've been selling dealership engines. They have. It's, 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 yeah. Yeah. They've been missing out, so I think they're coming yeah. coming and in line. Is, have you seen used? No, no. Are Ranger they prices? selling? They're selling remand, right? Well, they're still remands. Yeah, yeah. Although I did get one new from Subaru, a new block. Yep. Brad, it's fair. I'm sorry that happened to you. You got a comment, Michael? Go ahead on leasing cars. What's your comment? It's brilliant. Lease a car and buy it back to avoid excessive mileage fees. You are a brilliant man. That's what you do, but you do it to yourself, but you have to make sure the lease allows that. Some leases don't allow that. Some leases, you have to go to the dealer, and then they sock you. Oh, I see. I'm thinking about becoming an Uber driver, and I'm thinking this is a really good because I put a lot of mileage on. And guess what? Even if you lease a vehicle on your taxes, you can still take the standard mileage deduction. And if you drive enough miles, it makes sense to do these two things. Lease a car, buy it back. And then, um, yeah, you're bu- while because you're in it. essence, you're buying a used car from yourself. Did you know yeah. you can put and, extra money also, down to lower the interest it's a rate? High mileage. And also, it's a high mileage car that you're buying from right. yourself. Right. That's right. But you're buying it from brilliant. yourself knowing how you maintained it. It's critical that right. you maintain yeah, yeah, it properly. And it's also, else's. yes, that's right. And it's I would brilliant. suggest, um, I would suggest a lease for, you know, some people have leased for five and then purchase. I think that's too long. I think you lease for three, and then you can go buy for three if you want. And then you have a six, six-year deal. But be careful and make sure you want to keep that car and that it'll last, you know? Right. You know, uh, some friends and I are really enjoying your show out here in Arizona. We have iHeartRadio. Oh, and, excellent. Uh, excellent. Yeah, we're just enjoying your show. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Michael. Welcome, Arizona. Okay. Pa- Mark uh, has been waiting patiently. Now he has an issue with an all-wheel drive now, is this truly, you truly have a 96 car here? <laughs> yeah, it's a, uh, it's a beater. It's got a billion, trillion miles on it, you know. About it's, how it's many miles nice out of curiosity, bro? How many miles? At least 200. I think it's got 250,000 on it. It's got the 2.2. So, you, no, no. Did you just say, you liar, did you just say 250,000 <laughs> miles? Yeah, it's got a ton of miles on it. I I drive the wheels off this thing now, and uh, so you're calling with an issue. The issue is you have a 1996 Subaru with 250 thousand miles. Hey, that's just broken in now. <laughs> well, you know, and it's it's an amazing little car. It'll it'll go through two feet of snow. It'll go through 20 inches of snow like it's not even there. That is However, so, that's great. My issue with the thing is, 
say when the when the roads are snow packed and you're going down the, the highway and you say you're going 50 miles an hour and the road takes a curve, the thing acts like it's locked in to posi traction. It just wants to steer straight all the time. Is there an adjustment that can be done to that? You need to check the fluid in the in the center disc, most likely. Yeah. It might might have locked up the clutches or something. Yeah, it could be the wrong fluid as well. If you've had fluid change recently, I've seen that a lot too. So the the how does the all wheel drive work? It's got a clutch that actually lets wheels slip, so one can go faster than the other. That's how you unlock a posi. So if the clutch is locked up, you may have to get a T case. Okay. A transfer case. Transfer board. case, oh. yeah, inside they're, they're, they have clutches. You can try dropping the fluid out and putting the proper fluid in, and it may loosen things up. You may get lucky. Okay. All right. I'll give that a shot then. Thank yeah, you. thank you. And uh, that's what I love, having these guys around because they, they have answers. And if you need uh, any answers for your cars, give us a call or anything. Call us about 303-713-TALK, 303-713-8255. Viscous coupler, yeah. In the, t- yeah. In the transfer, yeah. sometimes they're in the still tab have too. Still, any car still have locking hubs. You have to get out of. You have to get out of the car to lock them. Any Ford that's been fixed. <laughs> oh, that yeah. shit. Aftermarket stuff. Yeah, still, yeah, yeah. The Fords. I, I used to have a Jeep. I had a really nice Jeep. But if you wanted to go full tilt, you got to get out and lock the fucking hub. Well, you can lock them in in November and take them out in March. Oh, you can. Oh yeah. yeah. But what if you drive around with them locked? Yeah. Okay, Genesis Total Exteriors means what it says. Total Exteriors. Roofing, soffits and fascia, that goes, that's near the edge of the roof there, and the gutters, and then the siding, including stucco, and then the windows and the doors and the decks, and the painting, and the railings, and the outbuildings. Yeah, Total Exteriors, Genesis Total Exteriors.com. And by the way, they'll do all your storm damage on one invoice, one point of contact, one person to deal with. That's good. Or, of course, you can get any part of it done. 303-679-8509, 679-8509. So, so, um, wow. Yeah, all you're doing is engaging the axles. So, I mean, yeah, you, you are wearing parts that you wouldn't okay. be wearing if you didn't lock them in. But, yeah. What is the purpose of locking them in? Uh, well, unlocking is the purpose of saving uh, yeah. gas. Saves yeah. gas and wear and tear. Yeah. All-wheel drive cars. Yep. They're not always yes. powered, right? They are. Yeah, they are. But aren't they going like They're a little more Some here. are rear-wheel bias. Some are front-wheel bias. But then, and then, but depending on your terrain, they they lock differently, or they're always locked. They have a but brain. It, it just they can they can direct speed. To okay. One with a wheel speed sensor. Or power, right? Yeah. Some can. Yeah. Some are very simple, like the Subaru. Yeah. It's just a clutch. Just a clutch. Others are more advanced, where they're literally yeah, some of the Audis directing are the tracking. Power, the... Yeah. I want. Are there any <clears throat> as sophisticated in directing power as anti-lock brakes are in directing stopping? The one I'm driving. Yeah. What's that? 2023 BMW iX. Yeah. Okay. But it's all electric. I have a, so it can direct power. You have an electric individual what? wheel. The whole car's electric. Yeah. There's no motor. Why the fuck you do that? You're, you're a gearhead. I'm surprised. treating myself. Man. I can't believe you bought one. Now listen, I have a B, I have a. Do you want to go play on the radio when you get home? You're done tw- playing on the radio when you leave here. Right? I have a 23 BMW X. I don't want to work on my car. I have a BMW X7. Yeah. The big motherfucker. Yeah. Very nice. Okay. Very beautiful, nice. beautiful, yeah. comfortable, fast, and boring. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I'm just fucking bored. Yep. I love it. The beautiful car. Go drive an i4 M50. Just, just drive Mine's it. An Mine's an X7 M50. I4 Five. M50. Mine's an M50. It's the electric Five. car. No, I get it. Yeah. No, electric cars are interesting. I think they're fun. I think yeah. Is a fast motherfucker. Is your car fast? Oh, it's fast. It's made out of graphite or, or a carbon fiber. Faster. What did that cost? I don't know. New? 97. Yeah? Yeah. Is, how big is it? It's decent. You should, well, you should check it out. Like I don't know how long court, it's it's decent. It? Is it like the 7, but electric? It's smaller than a 7. It's a 5. A, it's an X5. So it's a 5 electrified. Yeah. Okay. But then you don't have the transmission tunnel. So you got all this room in no, the no, front. No, no, I, I all dig this it, man. Room I didn't think of that. Yeah. yeah. My problem four. is, yeah. I just, yeah. God damn it, my problem is, 
I'm not buried in the car. I'm pay, it's paid for, but you know, they depreciate so fast. Yeah. I would not no, buy it. I would only lease it. I know. From now because on, the battery doesn't last. You know that's, what I mean? From now on, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. I don't drive that much anymore. Yeah. I used I don't to drive. Either. And you can lease an I-4 for 500 bucks a month right now, 400 bucks a month. But an I-4 is not electric, is it? It is. It's an electric car. It's a four-series electric. Uh, yeah. I want to... Do you lease... Oh, you pay for yours, right? You I leased it. So what are the payments? Right now, seven eight hundred. Okay. Yeah. But that's cheap for that car. It is. It's a really great but price. Did you put any down? You didn't. Did you? I'm. I didn't get seven eight hundred a month. I bought too early. I leased too early. I, I'm buried. I'm thirteen eighty a month. It's stupid. But you didn't put anything down. I put ten on the money factor deposits. I didn't do a cap reduction. Okay. So do you get that? It's 10 a deposit. Back? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You're going to be Not right a lot of people know about that. No, they don't. What yeah. it does is it offsets the interest. Yeah. Or the you know, so you're basically letting them invest ten grand. You pay less interest. You get the ten back. If you're good at investing, it's a bad deal. But if you suck at investing, yeah, it's it's not a bad deal. I lease my Subaru, and when we're almost all done, I said, "I'll tell you what. I'll sign the paper if you raise it to fifteen thousand miles a year." And they did it. But I did exactly what you said. I leased it for three years. And I wasn't sure I was going to keep it, so that's why I raised it to fifteen thousand. Yeah, because it was a great deal to so you buy it. back from yourself. Yeah, I know. Isn't that wonderful? But they were, they were. You know, I said, all right, fifteen thousand will do it, because that's a reasonable amount of money. Oh, uh, mileage if I'm going to buy it for myself, I'm yeah, down ten thousand miles. What difference? No, no, I wasn't sure. Because if they ding you, you're not dinging you because they're not buying and selling it. You're buying it back. Trajan Wealth, your trusted local fiduciary advisors. Trajanwealth.com. <laughs> Tom Martino, your troubleshooter, 303-713-TALK. Jay's got a comment on the e- Ford E350 that the guy ground into mincemeat. Go ahead there, Jay. Hey, buddy. Hey. Um, he may not need a motor. What? He might, but we don't know. What he needs to do is see what codes were set because it wasn't knocking. It was grinding, and that's real normal for those things when the timing chains go dead. Huh. And a lot of times you can you can put a timing set in there, clean the motor out, and be happy. The codes may be all related to timing. Cool. Jay, I appreciate that, and I'm sure he's listening. I want to ask you guys something. Seizing an engine. Couldn't they make an engine anti-seizable? It does, listen, I'm, I'm not kidding. Like some kind of system that shuts it down where you can't seize it. Oh, yeah. No, it's, it's definitely possible. To. I mean, they used to do that with oil senders. Yeah. Would kill the fuel pumps. So I think now they're not allowed. You're not allowed to. You're probably. not allowed to. Yeah. You're, I think you're right. Why? On the highways and so forth. You're you not can't... allowed to shut a car off. Unsafe. You have to allow them to pull over or try to pull over yeah, or whatever. Yeah, but okay. A light comes on mm-hmm. and, and it, you have a certain amount of time to pull over. I don't know. I mean, to well, me. Well, no, but Tom and I joke about it over here because you almost need like a clown to pop up out of the dash and say, stop. You know, cause because people just keep most going. of the people that I've talked to that have seized engines have done it to themselves. Yes. Yeah. Listen to him. He had the noise on the way to his event. <coughs> and then on the Didn't way home. Didn't do anything about it. And then, and then on the way back. To drive he could have called yeah. them at the event and said, come exactly. get me. We have a question on headlights. 2020 Honda Ridgeline. They're cute cars. Really nice cars. Randy, go ahead. My question is the trim level I purchased uh, was one trim level below the level that had LED headlights for low beams and high beams. So what do you have? What kind of headlights? Uh, they're, uh, they're like the project projector headlights for the high beams. And, and I guess maybe uh, uh, incandescent for the low beams. I'm may may I ask something, guys? Are they going with LEDs now for headlights? For right. headlights? Yes. Okay. Mine Go has ahead. them, yeah. Go ahead, Randy. Well, my question is, uh, would it be a possible for me or even a good idea to put aftermarket led headlights in place of what's in there now now tell me though before with a answer why would you do it what's the reasoning behind it uh you know i've better night vision uh are you having uh, trouble seeing with these uh, no but i know that uh the i'm pretty sure there are the led bulbs are significantly brighter um at least they are when I see people driving with them down the road. Have you priced uh, it out? 
Yeah, there were, uh, you know, maybe 125 to 225. What? But my question. They're, that's all yeah. they are? That's just, just for the, the bulb. Bulbs. Can you put a bulb in yeah. what he has? He yeah. can. Doesn't he have to do the whole fixture? Yeah. Go ahead. Tell me, ahead. Tom. There's a new thing released by Sylvania that, that is a plain Jane halogen bulb converted into an LED. You have to be careful. LEDs don't get hot. And what happens when you're driving through a snowstorm? Mm -hmm. Snow builds up on your headlights. Come on. If there's nothing to melt it off, then what does you're melt blind. it off? Heat from the halogen light bulb. No, no, but well, on yours. On mine, it has heat built into it somehow. They they either have a heating Man, element. Man, I never thought of that. Yeah. So the reason convert. headlights don't get covered is because they generate heat, and the LEDs don't generate heat, so they need heated elements. Mm -hmm. Right, but my question is this. Are the reflectors in the headlight assembly different on vehicles that were not designed to use LED bulbs as standard equipment? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But there's LEDs that came out that are designed to work like a halogen, yeah. where the LEDs are placed to work with the reflectors. But will they work as br more bright than the halogen? They are very bright. But It'll do your due light. diligence yeah. and look at the time to melt snow and stuff like that. Make sure you're not going to get stuck if you're in a cold climate. And that's very yeah. rare, though, that you get such a blizzard that you go blind like that. I mean, it is rare. You should be driving in those conditions. No, but you got to get home, maybe. I know what Tom is saying, but those are well, so that, rare. What about the color temperature of the bulbs? I mean, uh, I know that the... They're going to be LED. different. If you put an LED in there, it's going to be a little different. Okay. Do, do you have any recommended brands for aftermarket? Tom? Uh, Sylvania, like I said, is making a drop-in bulb Sylvania. where you don't have to change the housing. You just put the bulb in. Sylvania conversion bulbs, basically. They have Silver Star halogen line, which looks white it's like an LED. Bright. Yeah, yeah very it is. white. But, but it, it burns is out a, faster. But it's a, it's a halogen. It's it a is. halogen, yeah. So you still get the heat benefit, is but LED, it burns out faster. LED, is LED taking over? Do you know my airplane lights now are LED? My landing light's LED. Mm -hmm. I never thought they could do that. So many more lights with less amperage. It's so much easier. Yeah. I mean, you can leave it on all the time. It's yeah. just it's safety. And uh, why? I mean, God, I... That is one thing that we must say, Randy. It's so civilian, okay? Drop in bulb there, conversion to LED. Um, I love technology that does something like that. I mean, it is saving tons of electricity around the world, around the country. That's why I say, and, and I don't mean this, that we just be reckless with our environment. But all the people that are screaming about the environment and about our carbon and about our climate change and all that, I don't want to get into that discussion right now because really and truly it's like a religion for people and I don't want to get into it and I don't want to dispel it and I don't want to say it's great and it's real. I don't want to say anything except this. We always seem to come up with technologies when we need them. It's almost like, well, Whatever we're instilled with, I believe it's the image of God. But whatever people think, people are not just going to disappear. There is a innate and in built-in ingenuity. Right now, for example, guys, they came out with that new roof. Have you heard of this roof? Okay. I heard you, I heard it, you talking it, about it. It looks like a regular roof. All right, big deal, right? Regular roof. The roof takes sunlight and pollutants. And when it comes in the proximity of that roof, it turns into a nitrogen gas. The nitrogen, when it rains, it, so it's always producing like a nitrogen-oxygen mix. It's, it's eating the smog. So you have air currents going through your attic, so it purifies that air. So any air seeping into your home is purified. The rain then takes this nitrogen and sheds it off the roof into your gutters and enriches the soil. So if everyone, I'm not saying everyone or make it a law, but mm -hmm. eventually these technologies, if everyone had these roofs, you, you have cleaner air in the city, literally just from roofs. Now take the newer cars. And I, I don't know if I believe that all cars being electric would not be the same burden that that gas is. I mean, electric, I love electric cars. I love the technology. I love the idea. But if everyone truly, truly, truly had an electric car, and I'm not, the, please don't get political. I'm talking about cars. Would we have enough energy to run them all? Have you seen the solar roads? 
the roads that are solar panels and charge See, the cars as they drive on them? So this is, new again, mm -hmm. an example of ingenuity of man. And I believe in the ingenuity of man. I really do. In fact, I believe in it so much it astounds me. I look around at some of this technology, and I can't even fathom how it's done. I feel like an idiot. And, and before this, I used to feel smart. But with the newer technologies come out, okay, let's take this chat GPT, just chat GPT I have over here. And you ask it a question. The way it thinks and does this, now, there really isn't an artificial intelligence as we fear. There's no artificial intelligence that's sentient and, and, and can figure out what you're trying to do. Skynet, and, is that what it is? No, I, I The just Terminator have, thing? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah Skynet. <laughs> so, so what I'm saying is this, though. How did they do, how do they do this these AI chats? How do they do them? Hmm. I mean, I know what character recognition is, and I know that there are words that they devise and how do they interpret not only what you're saying but then run out and get everything that you're asking and put it in sentences and in the language you understand? I mean, the, I'm talking about the program itself. How many lines of code is it and who actually sits down and does it? I swear to God, don't don't you ever think about this kind of stuff? If you told Am I the only one that thinks about this stuff? I think about it all the time. How is it done? If you told my father that the computer he used to work on that took entire rooms mm -hmm. of buildings would hold in your hand like this, he would have called you crazy. The one in your hand our phones, called you crazy. Our phones. That's why I went to medical school. Our phones are a hundred times more powerful than the computers that put the man on the moon. Yep. Mm -hmm. Our phones. So we got more coming up. But I want people, people, would you call me and let me know something? Am I crazy? Do I obsess? Or has anyone ever looked at technology and thought, how the F is this done? I mean, where did it start? Are there people writing code and then have to put in every word? Is that how it's done? Or are there, are there already modules of, co of words that you import into it? I... I'm serious when I'm asking this. Technology seems to be built on technology, which is built on technology in stair steps and ladders. So you're not reinventing, which brings me to another topic. What would happen if we lost our, our high-level technology? Do we have enough low-level to build it back up? I mean, what would happen if everything was wiped out? How long would it take us to get back to that point? How long before we can ask ChatGPT to make a better version of itself? See, that's where I, it's not sentient. It can't. Um, so anyway, we got, again, I didn't mean to get so cerebral and crazy people, but if you want to comment or car problems or anything, 303-713-TALK. This is Denver's Talk Station with Michael Brown in the morning and Dan Kaplis in the afternoon, 630 KHOW, Denver. Now, Impact Traffic. This report is sponsored by Silk. Feel plenty good. Shop wherever you find groceries. Pretty easy driving throughout the Denver Metro. Despite the gray weather, I-25 north and southbound showing highway speeds through town as well as up north to Fort Collins and down south to the Colorado Springs area as well. Back to town heading to DIA I-70 east and westbound flowing free south of there. 225 north and southbound. No complaints through Aurora and the Denver Tech Center and heading to Boulder. Highway 36 east and westbound flowing free as well. Fox 31, pinpoint weather. Snow starting to alleviate. High of 36 today. Overnight low of 21. Tomorrow, mostly sunny skies warming right up with a high of 54 degrees. The current temperature in Denver is 30 degrees. With your impact traffic and weather, Mark Swan, 630 KHOW. Silk's delicious plant-based beverages help bring a daily dose of goodness to help you feel plenty good. They are rich in calcium and a good source of vitamins A and D to support the health of you and your family. Shop wherever you find groceries. ZeroResDenver.com, the only carpet cleaning company I'll let in my home, and it should be the only one you let in your home if you want really clean, get zero-fied. That means they use nothing. What do I mean by that? Yeah, they use water. But it's super softened, alkaline based, and maybe a little electrically charged water. It's the best cleaning agent in nature. For God's sakes, it can smooth stones. Look at what erosion does. Now think about using that in a positive way. 
through the fibers of your carpet, your ductwork, your upholstery, your tile and grout. Get Zerofied. And right now, three rooms starting at 109, a hallway free, and $75 off duct cleaning. You want to talk spring cleaning? Talk ZeroResDenver.com. You have to love them. You'll never feel a better clean. That's right, because you can feel it as well. No dirt attracting residue. Hence the name ZeroResDenver.com. So, Tom, I was doing computing program yeah, analysis I can hear back it. in the 60s. What language? When in, well, I, I did RPG, Fortran, COBOL, do like and this. assembly language. So I was doing that with these big, and then you know what? Yeah, I can hear. I said, I, headphone jack. this is going Fine. nowhere. So oh, that's, that's when I decided I'm going to do something that has a future. So I decided to go to medical school. Yeah. Instead of, instead of, cause, I would say they both have a future, but man. You I'm probably right. still did okay. Yeah, but n- nobody in those days, Tom, except for three or four people in the world, <laughs> thought computers were going to be used that they are today. None of us had the foresight to see that. I like to tell the joke that my, my dad and his buddy were working in the computers. And his buddy goes, hey, we should start our own little computer company. My dad said, no way. You know what the buddy's name was? Mr. Dell. Really? No, no. Oh, no. Um, Marge is not available until after 1 o'clock. She's oh. got uh, conference calls. Okay. I'm Tom. Ryan. 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 Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Ryan Shuling. Sh- Shuling. Like your shoes on your feet. Shuling. I just want to make sure I get it right there, Ryan. Cause it's Dutch. It's weird. It means shelter in English. The shoe, basically. I feel very sheltered now. You should be. <laughs> what is it, German? A Dutch. Dutch. Which is Germanic, but yeah. I, you know, no, what? Dutch is supposed so, to be an easy language for Americans to learn. Now listen, I have a geek. I have a geek that I hired that was a friend of mine when he was a kid. I was a mentor, and he developed an artificial intelligence. And I know how he did it, but it's a combination of searching a search engine and um, a... Ours is search engine, math, and observation, right? And then it reports back data. In essence, it's for a hedge fund. So it goes out and analyzes thousands of trades, and it does what's called inverse correlation. So it watches stocks that go up and down, right? So it's watching a million of them. Hmm. And it picks ones that always move in opposite direction, always, a hmm. pair. And, and it goes over thousands of transactions. So if it happens once or twice, no. But if it happens... So, so, and we don't have any rhyme or reason, but it happens all the time. Like, one was uh, that, that exercise where, not pink, but the other one. Peloton? Huh? No, no. Oh. It, it was uh, clothing. Um, but anyway, I got the... Under Armour? I got all the pairs, but this pair was like, like this clothing line along with a damn clinic, clinics. And they were in reverse correlation every single time. So we could go one long and one short and guarantee a profit, right? Well, oh, wow. But that's what it does. Yeah. So it goes one long, one short. But at, no matter what, every once in a while, you'll get a loser. Sure. But, so then what it does is shuts us down at, at a quarter of a point of a loss. So if you think about the algorithm, if we shut down at a quarter point loss, don't hold for bigger profits. And when we get a quarter point or above, it automatically shuts down. So it has a constant trajectory this way. Constant, no matter what, even if it loses. But here's the thing. The pairs make no fucking sense. They have no correlation. <laughs> but they always move in inverse correlation for some reason. Like, but if you look at it, you can like try to figure out why. Like, so it's more of an observation. It's not. It's not. It didn't tell us to do it until it it observed. Mm-hmm. So that's what really our artificial intelligence. Does. It observes and analyzes and then reports. That's what it's doing. It's not thinking. You yeah. know. But what happens when everybody starts doing that, though? You know what well, I mean? I don't know if people are, and they, they might be. But I'm sure they will at some point. But, but so what? I mean, it, 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 the market does what it does. I mean, I don't care if this fund makes money and my fund makes money. I don't care. I mean, it's not hurting me. <laughs> but but um, so I started, I, I really did start a hedge fund. It's real. It's registered. It's everything. It's a real hedge fund. And last year, we returned 34%. TrajanWealth.com. Denver's Talk Station, 630 KHOW. Hi, Tom Martino, your troubleshooter, 303 713 Talk, 303 713 8255. So, listen, uh, Ryan is with us, Schuling. 
who do, he, he's a man of many hats. He does everything from producing to hosting. And I, I swear to God, if they ask him to do the floors, I think he might. I have done that before, actually. Okay, right. It's interesting you bring that I up. I like him. He, no, I'm yeah. serious. He do, he's a man of all, tr- of all levels. And, and a but, great face for Ryan, really quickly, <laughs> I've been taking the temperature of people. Yeah. Uh, I talked to Peter Boyles earlier. Oh. Who I call my hero and legend and friend. Yes. And uh, he said what I did, but also, you know, this is not political, actually. I, wanna, I wanted to, you can be political, I don't care. Hmm. I wanted to observe it. And, and I was almost cringing before he got to the podium. Hmm. And then I said to my wife, you know, as a joke, I said, I didn't know we're doing so great, you know, but <laughs> this country. But then, right, right. but then I looked at him and I thought, this man is incredible. He did an incredible job. I don't, I, I think that's my opinion. I'm not saying he should be president. I'm not saying I hate Trump. I'm not, all I'm saying is hmm. he did a masterful job, in my opinion, even with his ad libs. I swear to God, I thought he did a great job. That's that's not a political statement, and I invite people to react to it if they want. They can even text me. But what do you think? What is what are your feelings? Tom, you ever play a limbo? No. What is that? Well, you know, you have a bar, right? And then you got to try to go under the bar. No, no, that's you called. I mean? uh, oh yeah, limbo. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's right. There was a song about it. Yeah, that, right. You know. Yes, I remember limbo. The limbo stick. So imagine if the limbo stick was so low, there's no way you can get under it you just had to go over it right is that what he was you're saying the bar set low oh by everybody and so we weren't expecting much so you're saying anything sounded good that wasn't feeble i think that helped him win in 2020 when a lot of people dan capless warned about this were underestimating biden and really ripping on him about the cognitive stuff and then he shows up in one of the debates and holds his own to your point kind of making the same comments a lot of people did in a debate against Trump. And I think the mere fact that he was able to do that gave people some reassurance, like, okay, Trump's crazy, and I'm going to go for this alternative. This old guy, he reminds me of, like, warm oatmeal and my grandma and grandpa, and it's going to be all good. Do you think he did a good job? No, I don't. And I'm talking strictly. Objectively. Objectively and strategically because. Not compared to what he, I know what you're saying. I was looking at he did a job compared to what he what he usually does and that's why i think he did a good job but objectively you're saying he didn't do a good job he had energy but i think too often that came across as anger and i think he needed to come across more as like a uniting warm friendly unifier that he promised he was going to be in the last campaign he was speaking to i think a very narrow targeted audience within his own base i don't think he built any bridges last okay. night okay all right Mm-hmm. to people that might be in the middle. And I'm talking people that maybe they voted for Trump in 16, they hated Hillary. They didn't like Trump's mannerism, so they voted for Biden in 20. They're real kind of tentative and uncertain. And, and now they're abandoning Biden. They, they're maybe going to vote for Trump again. Those are the people he should have been targeting last night, and he was not. One guy says, Tom, um, I don't know, this is a text, what they did to Biden or what they gave him to get him ready for his speech, but whatever it is, I want to get my hands on Yeah, get on some it. of that, right? Prior uh, to last night, he couldn't go five minutes without falling over or flubbing. Prob- he, was able, he, he was able to talk more than an yeah. hour. Uh, D- definitely have, some vitamin B do involved. You think, do you think truly they yeah. gave him stuff to keep? What do you think they, they did to. To, to prepare him? That, vitamin B, maybe some Adderall. I mean, Come I'm on. talking short term. I'm not joking. I'm, I, there's things that he had, because if you noticed his speech pattern, he was he was fast. He was angry. He uh, was, I think, a little bit more amped up than the occasion called for. But when you see sometimes when he drifted off, let's say the press conference that he had in the immediate wake of the her report, he goes, I got to go out there tonight. And they didn't have a lot of time to prepare him. And he was real shaky. And he mixed up the president of Mexico with the president. No, of Egypt. I remember that. Yeah, it was terrible. Right. And he wasn't terrible last night. What I'm saying is there's a way to manage it. He's what? 81 years old. Yeah. Get him plenty of rest. He's going to sunset at some point. Maybe cocaine. I don't know about that. They did have that there in the uh, White House there at one time. But he went back to Camp David. I was talking about this with Michael Brown earlier today. And he was able to rest, relax, prepare, practice the speech. And I think there was a way that they could contain it to get an hour out of him. And I think that's what they did. Did he have a teleprompter? Yeah, of course. Okay. Are they the glass ones that are out in front? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Jimmy Fallon joked that it was the first one in like four thousand font. Or I'm going to tell you something. He did a he did a good job of not looking like he was reading. Well, anything. I will say this to his credit. I mean, he did. He, he went off script a couple of times when they were kind of razzing him. I know. You know and didn't sound. And he didn't sound terrible when he, he did. He was able to kind of joust with them a little bit. And I thought you're right. I think that played well to his advantage. But there were, and and this is on more of a on a contextual contextual thing. There were some out and out just falsehoods. There oh, really, there mean, really, yeah. really were. But then everyone does that. Yeah, and again, I just think there was a way he could have projected all of those strong points that he believes his administration did, and just done so in a much more positive, uplifting, soaring manner that we used to see. I would say presidents of both parties, whether it was Bill Clinton or George W. Bush or Barack Obama. You know what's you funny know? is here's what's funny: the very principle that the Supreme Court used to say road ver- Roe versus way and a ab- way Roe versus um, Wade Wade yep, yep. Uh, yeah and abortion I'm mm-hmm. sounding like Biden now yeah. what, what what that very principle was that it is not an inborn constitutional right but every state can make their own decision that's the very same logic um, they're using about the presidential race that it can't be individual. That oh, excuse me, the opposite is about the state. They're saying that the states can't do a federal thing, and the federal can't do a, a, a state thing. They are the ballot. I'm talking about yeah, it's about Trump being on state ballots. Right, right. They're saying yeah. states can't do it because it's a federal office. Correct. Basically, you're correct. And it would be hodgepodge. Mm-hmm. And what they're saying about abortion, it is kind of consistent in that they're saying. This is not federal. This is a state issue. They separate. Yes. The the Supreme Court does a great job of separating what should be a state issue. Correct. And what should be a federal issue. I think that's to reflect and respect the differing values that might take place between, say, California and South Dakota. It's just a different lifestyle, and it respects the federalism of that issue for each state. But here's what I I don't think anyone's trying to make (sighs) abortion totally illegal. I like think, can't. It wouldn't be no, impossible. No. I think that Democrats want to make it a constitutional right, mm-hmm. and a lot of the Republicans want to keep it as a state decision. Yeah, and there are those that want a, a national are there th- ban, to ban like it? a fifteen okay. week limit. Which, uh, to your point, I think I'm more in the camp you just described, which is I, I prefer it to be a state level issue decided on that basis, but. You're right. Biden brought it up last night. And, you know, it's this these empty promises of I'm going to pass uh, a law legislation okay. and sign it that we're going to codify Roe. That's never going to happen. We have to take a break. You're wrong. There are some conservatives who want to outlaw it. Yeah, totally. I, I didn't know that. Of well, that those are real extreme ones. But look, I at, think, look at Alabama. They even well, outlawed that's IVF. Just, that's a state thing. But right. on the national level, there, is, there are those that want to do a national 15 week. They'll yeah. never, that'll never happen no, anymore. No, than no more than Roe will be codified. Right. It just, the people, the average why American did they is say, in the middle. Why did one court say it was a constitutional right to do that? And another one said it's, it's not. about, because it's about a very broad interpretation why Roe was flawed in the first place. That abortion's not in the Constitution, right. but they're deriving it from a right to privacy, which is, is in the Constitution, a personal right to privacy. And that's real. That's real shaky legal ground. And that's why they overturned it, point blank. But Strangling. I will tell you that the principles they use to want abortion fly, flew flatly in their face on the vaccination issue. Because yeah. that's a right to privacy, too. There you go. See? They, that, they were in conflict. RKC Automotive, I'm happy to welcome them to our automotive family, RKC. Now, you can find RKC on Facebook. You can find them on Evans, just west of Tejon. So why don't you call RKC, see Romando, where he does repairs on new and used cars. And he also does, of course, light repairs, heavy repairs, whatever you need, foreign and domestic, 720-749-3965. Retirement Planning Center of the Rockies. Here's the message. They help get you ready for retirement. And you say, well, what the heck do they do? They'll go over it. They they want to make sure you have a nest egg and then you can keep that. It can create income and that you'll have emergency money and 
And no matter how big the bucket is, they make sure you have those buckets. And what I'd like you to do is call them because they'll go over your life with you free of charge. If you think they can help you, good. They're helping me. If not, nothing lost. rpcenter.com, 970-663-3211. Now, Frank Duran, the real estate man, you know what? I can guarantee, absolutely, positively, 100% guarantee that you'll have a positive Good, profitable experience with Frank Duran, the real estate man.com. Why? Because I've known him for 30 years, and I'll tell you this he sells more for more money, and he has more dedication to doing things that are right than anyone I know. Frank Duran, the real estate man.com. He'll even do a free valuation of your home for the asking with no obligation to list. That's Frank Duran, the real estate man.com, 303 920 1622. And that analysis is not some drive-by. He'll measure, he'll take photos, he'll look at comps, he'll look at supply and demand, and give you a figure on what that house will sell for. You'll be amazed. Frank Duran, the real estate man.com, 303-920-1622. Who? Oh, it's on the internet. Enix Tanner. Who is that? He's, he came out against uh, a lot of the players for, for taking money from China. China. Yeah, NBA. Oh, well, why'd they take money from China? Because all the Nike and all the other... They, oh. They, they, a lot of their money comes from China. I thought Nike was... Um, hmm. Is he going back? Holy shit, that guy... You know what? Who would want to face this motherfucker? Jake Paul. Jake Paul is the other crazy guy on the internet. Well, he's gonna get Wait, is he the YouTube guy? Yep. Oh, oh, fuck. <laughs> He'll get his ass so kicked. Oh, my. Oh, no. Now, now, Jake Paul did not get any kind of um, belt, did he? No. He's won a couple fights. But who did he beat? He beat someone nobody thought he could beat. One of the Colesco brothers, you think? Yeah, he's been doing okay. But he's... Kind of, uh, oh, my God. You know what? The rage inside that Mike, the rage alone inside Mike Tyson... Do you, do you realize what a fury he, he's the, that guy's no no don't look at him he looks a little better there but oh man this would be such a great fight if nothing else it'll make them both rich that's what I was gonna say you know I get in a ring with Tyson for 30 million dollars I don't know man you'd have to have your nurses all lined up well you'd have to hit, hit, hit me once and I'll, the fight's over <laughs> he's pretending to fight the guy's here <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, what a moment. I was watching that fight live. The Holofield fight. He spit his ear off. You know, I knew Mike Tyson when he was a boy. You know, Did you? Cus D'Amato? I, Cus was like uh, uh, my uncle. Why do you, you're sandbagging us, no, huh? Honest you gotta... to God, Cus D'Amato yeah. really? was like my uncle. Absolutely. You've got to tell these stories on the air. I would see Cus three times a week. In fact, he helped me because I was in a newspaper business and I did a feature with him and I wrote all about him. And then I told him I wanted to get into broadcasting. And then, uh, but I was a little nervous. And he said, well, what I teach my boxers is how to use fear. So he invited me to the boxing camp. It was the Catskill Boxing Club. Yeah. And Mike Tyson was there. And yeah. um, Joey had, uh, had wait, wait, um, he was a middleweight. Hadley. Marvin Hagler? No, no, no Hadley. No. Hadley, okay. Yeah, he, he never made it. But also, this was, uh, Floyd Patterson was in the past, but he, uh, we visited him, and then he took us, Cuss took us on a field trip to uh, Deerfield, Pennsylvania, where we visited Muhammad Ali mm. and his uh, boxing camp up on the mountain. And as you go up the road, there were rocks on each side, and they had the names of famous boxers on each rock as you went up the Oh, road. wow. And then when you got there, that was a pine gym, pine, beautiful rusty oh. gym, and across the top. Weekdays on 6:30 K How. Hi, Tom Martino, your troubleshooter. 303-713 Talk. 303-713-8255. All right, we. Uh, I'm going to go to Steve now. Who's been waiting about this, and then I want to go back to a quick discussion uh, after the first hour. Just a quick discussion. Uh, on uh, on what you think of technology and of uh, the speech last night. And if, in fact, um, you really believe 
that Biden can make another four years. I wonder, or or Trump, and and what what we have. Um, you know, wouldn't it be nice though? Truly, I I think the best thing that could happen to this country if they both dropped out. That's my opinion. It would be so fresh and so cool to see what would happen. Steve, what's going on with you? Hey, Tom, long-time listener. How Thank you, you man. What's going on? Tom, are you familiar with Sinclair Gas? Yes, of course I am, yeah. Okay. You don't, do you have a dyno pay? No, I don't. I don't have the app. Mm-mm. Okay, well, they did away with their card in, in right. December 31st. They're trying to do like Starbucks. So They're trying to do like Starbucks. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, you got to download this app to get the discount on your gas. If By you the wanna, way, you know. expect that now from many, 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 many merchants. Yeah, I, I, I know it's kind not. Of it's not going to be one central pay. They're all going to try to do their 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 branded pay pay app. Huh. Interesting. Well, anyway, I downloaded the app, put in all my information, did everything to a T. And I uh, went up there to try to, you know, you pull up to the pump, put in the pump number, and then continue. But it, And then when I when it gets done, it says, error, uh, use another card. And I did that a couple of times, and then it didn't. I used another card, and it still did the same thing. It says, error, use another card. You and mean error, use another card to feed in there? Well, you were trying to give it a card, right? Yeah. Right, exactly. You're doing and something wrong like, loading the card. How Do you take a picture of the card with that app, or do you uh, manually enter it? Well, I manually entered it. I put in the number, expiration date, and all no, that. No, I, I get that. Do they have – I know it's – I you don't want to hear this, Steve. I swear to you, you don't want to hear it because I've had this happen to me so many times. Some You're doing something wrong, and it, or it might be something that you're that your phone is doing wrong when you, your keys – might be sticking or doubling i'm telling you it's usually an input error if you go on a computer sometimes they have a website where you can enter that information for your account like starbucks has that if you look for a corresponding website you might be able to enter it there better um or you can try if they have the scanning one hold on if you have another question just hang on with unrest in the world and you know know, i know they're so fucking frustrating I had a keyboard one time that was giving the wrong key. I don't know, not the wrong key, but something about the key. Like a wrong letter. It wasn't giving the, what it wanted, or it was a, a cap or something on a password. And I finally figured out my keyboard was bad. And I finally figured it out when I was trying to do something, and I kept getting errors. And I said, well, all these things can't be wrong. Yeah. That guy that sees this engine. Wow. Look at him now. He must have had four pounds of makeup on last night. Well, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's Hollywood. Yep. It's subtle production. His hair, well, b- b- Trump just worked, yeah. but his hair, what he should do is, see how it hangs in the back? That looks terrible. A lot of old people have that, Tom. I don't know why he just doesn't go bald. I just shave mine so close now because <laughs> rather than letting it thin, just fuck it. Yeah. I mean, you're doing the same thing. I mean, just don't try to fake it. Well, it is what it is. Some of us are so lucky. <laughs> dock, I keep telling you, it's what I have. I, I, I don't, I don't, there's not that much dye on a dock. Well, you know what happens if you take a shower at night, there's nothing you can do about a combing your hair in the morning. So I just put a hat on. I, use, I swear to God, when I do my beard, I go like this. Sure. Sure. Somebody else that. said it too, the MR guy on the YouTube. You think it was a scanner? You know those things, a skimmer on the pump maybe was stealing his card and that's why No, I'm... no, that no, it's an app. It's not a, you don't you don't put He it doesn't in. use a card. Oh, no, okay. it's an app. So I thought he said he is, tried the card or He tried to put his card in the app. So in the app, you got you like any pay app, payment plan, you got to put in a card to use. Yeah. Yeah. Like Venmo, right? Or like Zelle. Well, in, in these pay apps, you've got to put your card in so it's on file. So you're really paying with your credit card, but you use this damn app. Lazy, right? We entered on the phone. Kevin O'Leary, what are they doing? Oh, never mind. He's from Shark Tank. 
Yeah, I know, but they have a story with it. Man, that that United States of America jet is so fucking beautiful. I mean, look, mm -hmm. when you see the how big it is and the engines and that's something that, you know, the whole speed thing got to pull one word out of it because it's so easy to do. <clears throat> did they? Our, did our they, governor said newcomer. That smells like just such a challenge. I wonder if they could do a charity boxing match, Biden and Trump. <laughs> could you fucking imagine? I say what amazes me every time is there are 360 million people in the United States, and these are the two this that we wind up with. <laughs> I mean, you think I about it. Either. Slim Pickens is what you're saying. You huh? know who my hero is? Have you ever seen John Kennedy, the senator from Louisiana? Yeah. You, if you go on YouTube and watch him, I like him. Interview these judicial nominees who have no place being on the bench. I know. There was a woman that Cruz interviewed. She had. He listed at least 10 cases where she was overturned. And he had a list because he only has five minutes. Every one of her decisions was overturned, and they wanted her to be a federal judge. I think Rand Paul is smart, too. Well, he has to be. He's a doctor. <laughs> Wait, his dad's a doctor. He is, too. He's an ophthalmologist. They're both are. His dad was an OBGYN. His son is a, an ophthalmologist. Just like, you know, who else is? Um... The guy from from uh, Syria, Bashar. He's an ophthalmologist. And they're full MDs. They just go to the eye, right? Yeah. Yeah. I went to my. I, was, I had a cyst on my eyelid, so I went to my the ophthalmologist. So I know. He said, oh, "I can take care of that. Just lay back." So we get the scalpel and just cuts the damn thing. Jesus Christ. With your fucking, and your eyes open? I mean, you're looking. It was at on it. my eyelid. It wasn't on my eye. So you went like that? It was, he had, he held it down. I just went, with the scalpel. Did it hurt? Hell yeah, it hurt. <laughs> Fuck that. That's just, yeah, hell yeah, hurt. <laughs> Sometimes you get great treatment, and other times, because you're a doctor, I think you know everything, so they don't treat, they don't uh, go through the whole rigmarole. Have you tried Mark's cell phone? Uh, Why did you hear that they, they took his private conversations and made them public when he was walking in whispering in people's ears? Oh, no they transcripted it. Oh, no. He said there, I told Netanyahu we'll have a come to Jesus meeting. Which is doubly insulting for a Jew, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, wasn't that great? A um, to, are you going to try to convert him too? No, I mean, I mean, did you hear the, they, what, what did they do? Where did they get the recordings or the transcripts of those private conversations? They just had cameras in the... And, and they just probably turned them up and, and yeah. wrote them down. Then they, his handler, like, reminded, like, there's cameras on, sir. You know, oh, yeah, hello. Consumer Cellular has a bad... Never being president. Oh, that scares the shit out of me. Do you really believe, truly, that he could not last for four years? Do you guys believe that? No, I don't see any way. 86, no way. No. Not in his condition. No. Now, some 86-year-olds, maybe. Uh, I've seen some really sharp ones, but not him. Oh. Hey, I'm his age. I could last for four more years. No, How old not, are you? How old are you? I'll be 80 in November. No, he's older than you. A little bit. He's what eighty now, right? Eighty one. You have your, you have your, you would have. He doesn't have as many faculties as you do right now. I can tell. I can just tell. I mean, I have all my faculties. I know. And he has none. <laughs> well, he doesn't need his dick for office, though. <laughs> At least I'm not like, uh, oh, what's his name? Tunes 4 to 6. Friday at 4, we'll have the lowlights from the State of the Union and the highlights, if there are any, and the always thoughtful and funny John Caldera. Join us at 4. Shoot a 
that's gonna help the common man. This is the Troubleshooter Show. Now, Tom Martino. Hi, Tom Martino here. Welcome to the show, 303-713-TALK, 713-8255. Ideal Home Loans, still doing home loans. I swear to you, they have interest rate guarantees. When rates go down, if they go down, you get read it finance free of charge. Idealhomeloans.com, 303-867-7000. Now, let's talk. Jim wants to talk about consumer cellular. Then I have Ryan Schilling with me. We're going to go over just impressions about people and aging and offices and 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 how Biden did as a person, not necessarily as a politician. He had, might have some political thoughts. I'm trying to get Mark Major on. Earlier in the show, we had Peter Boyles on. So uh, try Mark. I think he might be in cell range right now. He was in some cartel country down there in Mexico for a while. Anyway, um, Jim, what's going on? Yes. What's happening? Uh, back uh, first week in January, we purchased. Uh, we, we're longtime consumer cellular customers. Okay. And never had a problem with them. And by the way, we've been listening to you for like two decades. Thank but you, man. Never had a problem. It's like I've gone life without a problem. How right long have you had things. consumer cellular? Because I, I, I'm familiar with them, but how long have they been around? Yeah. They've been around since the late 90s. Okay. Uh, okay. So yeah, and, what's wrong now? Well, they they retail sell uh, phones, and my wife's phone was like a decade old. So I purchased from them an iPhone, iPhone 14, and it didn't work. It was dead on arrival. A lot of the newer phones are doing these e-SIMs, these electronic cards. That's right. Cards so were, was it that right. that was bad or what? Well, they sent uh, – they. We couldn't get it to work, and they said, no problem. Mail it back to us because inside their greeting package, their startup package, they they have an envelope in there for you to return. Did you do it? And that's what we did. Okay. And they, and, and, and they sent us another one, exact same model and everything, and that one was dead on arrival. That it seems weird, man. That seems it totally I mean, weird. Are, the, it is. The odds of that are everyone agrees that that's totally well, crazy. Well, why do you so think we, that's happening? There, I don't think it did happen. I think there's something we're not looking at. Now, are well, these uh, e, are it, these eSIM phones? Yes, they are. But that's not the that's not the problem. Uh, we don't want to f- focus on the wrong thing. The <clears throat> The second phone, it was suggested we go to our local Apple store, which we have one down here in the Springs, and we, in a conference call with tech support at Apple, they're in the store at their so-called genius bar, and a senior tech support person at Consumer Cellular tried to breathe life into the second Right, got phone. it. The replace, yeah, didn't, couldn't get that to work. They said, let's, after four hours, let's just send it back, call it good. Uh, we'll send you a return envelope. All right. You know, with did you get a, on did it. you get a third phone? Did not. Nope. We reactivated an old phone that we've kept around wisely because we needed that. And, uh, well, they never sent us that return envelope with their indicia, in, uh, they don't trust, and I can understand liability and what have you. They, uh, they got it. Want people to. So yeah. you didn't. Well, you, so didn't. did you still have that one in your possession? We still do, and uh, now, after I don't know uh, if now the uh, anything that comes from our phone. <laughs> <laughs> if they're hanging up on us or hello, hello, it's like, well, let me ask you this. What are the consequences yeah. now of you having that second phone, which is sitting there dead? Are they charging you for it? Well, uh, Oh yes, they have. That's, that's, it's like, first it would be nice to return their property. It's theirs. It's their phone. And, uh, but we have no means because they have yet to send us, uh, no, I, I get it. Listen, do listen. they have a brick and mortar uh, yeah. store in the Springs? Yeah. Well, can't you return uh, it there? To the brick and mortar store. Can't no, you return? Not, uh, How much are they no, charging no, you for the? Uh, just let's get right to it. How much are they charging you? Huh? It's six hundred bucks. And did they put it on your char- on your card? 
How did they charge you, Jim? Uh, I I purchased it with one method, one credit card, so it's easily trackable. It's just the way I do things. Okay, so is it on but, a credit but, card? But what what, what contest can, the credit card? I have the I have the credit card, and they have uh, they have they're in the pro- I called my bank, and they got the signal that they're it's in the process of a refund. However. The account, the bank account, mm-hmm. that we use for many years to pay for the monthly service charges. Yes. The minutes and what have you. They, uh, they, unauthorized, by the way, they charged us the, uh, the same amount for a new phone. Because now, since they've been recalcitrant and they haven't... Uh, given us a means by which they would recognize us to send a phone back to, they have charged our regular bank account for 20 bucks a month that we normally charge for. They charged our bank account over $600 okay. so, for Jim, that second phone. Jim, I get it. So hold on. Because you're asking for a refund on the credit card, they said, okay, we'll, we'll just put it on your phone account. Is that right? Uh, apparently, Jim. yes. Okay, yes. okay, fine. So hold on. Yeah. So right now, the consequence of the, them not accepting the phone back or giving you an envelope is the, the consequence to that is you're being charged $600. Did they literally withdraw it from the bank? Are your payments, it was six, were $600 withdrawn from your bank? Yes. Okay. And it is not the means by which the phone was originally purchased. I get it. I get it. Now, did you talk to your bank about getting that $600 back? It, it's a, it's actually, it's on a debit card. Well, and that has a different procedure. So, so and, the debit uh, card. I purchased it originally with I, a credit card. And look at Jim, the, let me uh, just tell you something. After the sixth time you told me that, I got it. You purchased with one credit card. You asked for a credit, and they put it on your debit card, for which they had no authorization, and it's tied to your bank account where your regular service monthly payments are taken. Do you hear that I got that? You don't have to clarify it again. Now let's do something about it. That's what I want to do. I get that you didn't purchase it with that card, but I guarantee you, that somewhere in your agreement with Consumer Cellular, you said they could use that debit card for what you owe, okay? And they're considering this a bill for what you owe. What I don't understand is it was so easy to send the first phone back because it had a built-in envelope, you said. The second one did not come with that built-in envelope, but do you still have the information where that phone went so you can ship it back on your dime? We do not. Okay. They, uh, after, after. So you don't reason, know. That, the bottom line is you don't yeah. know where to send it. Yeah. The when you call them and ask them, from. when you call them and say, I got a return authorization, but I never got an envelope and I need to send this phone back. What do they say? It's now too late. It's beyond a period of time. How long has it been? They, How long has it been? It's been under, we were, uh, it's been less than a month and it's, it seems, yeah, it's just. What time, uh, what do you mean? You're, so they only allow what a 10 day, uh, return. What, what, what do you mean? It's too long. I don't, you have a dead phone and it never was used. Person, it was never activated. Everyone we, everyone we talk up to. And when we escalate, we get a different story from everybody, even though we are willing out of our pocket to send it back, insured everything. Uh, no address is given because they claim what they ship things from. They they receive things uh, at a different address and everything, and a big runaround. It should be straightforward, as you pointed out, but it's uh, it's not. I we get just it. want yeah, we just want this envelope back. But when you go uh, to the store, envelope. they they won't accept it at the store. Is that right? Well, they can't because it's it's it was purchased from Consumer Cellular. It's an Apple phone, but. They're, they're a reseller of it, so there's no... No, I'm talking uh, about, is there a consumer cellular store? No, okay. there is not. Okay. I People on YouTube want to know why they, he gave them the bank card to pay the monthly bill. 
as well, opposed to a credit card. That's the way he did it. He did it with a debit card. I don't know. That's just the way he did it. I mean, it was a surprise. It was for it. Was, it I I purchased it on on a personal credit card for my wife to keep it clean and simple. Actually. That's uh, to avoid all this. Yeah. Have you ever taken that Apple phone? Work. Have you ever taken that, excuse me, that phone to Apple? The, and, and what did they say? We, we physically went to the Apple store and in a conference call and they did all their quality. And what could they not? They, why could they not activate it? They could not get it to work and neither uh, remotely with a, uh, a consumer cellular senior tech person. Uh, two Sundays ago, stood there and they could not get it to work. And Do you know why? We no, sir. They just you just couldn't they get it no, to work. Uh, they couldn't get it to work, and we all agreed. Let's just send it back to you guys. And the uh, consumer cellular representative said, "We will send you an envelope back, and it's all good because we had a replacement phone, and we would you know just like to walk away." Okay. We're All trying right. to make it easy on them. All right. All right. Well, um, I was looking for a Colorado connection here for consumer cellular. In other words, I wanted to see if they have, yeah, they have a good standing uh, certificate here. And I wanted to see who their um, registered agent is. It's in Littleton. And they have a registered agent. It's a corporation, it's a service company, but you can still serve them there. And because they have a street address listed, they can be served and you can take them to small claims court in Colorado. And you can sue them for the $600 that you have something that is of no value. And you have the phone to prove it. And I'm saying, if you go to the secretary, say, I'm going to tell you who this registered agent is. It's called Corporate Service Company. They, they're, they're, they're professional uh, agents. And, and what they do is they let companies have a corporate presence in states they do business. And that they allows you. Box. They essentially do the, cor- the they're, they act as the registered agent for many different companies. Right. I, I get so that. it's Corporate Service Company. But you can serve them there. Okay. You can serve Consumer Cellular there. 1900, okay. well, you can't, but someone can. 1900 West Littleton Boulevard. And I don't know if they're still there. This, is for, this was filed, I would imagine they're still, this was filed in, in year 2000, but it's in good standing, so they must renew it. And if it's in good yeah. standing. So what I would do is I would okay. sue them in small claims court. I mean, we wouldn't mind calling them, but, uh, you know, here's the thing. I don't know why they're just ignoring you. When you say, I have a phone that doesn't work, and I sent the last one back, I'd like to send this one back. What do they say? They verified that they received the first phone, and that's why they sent the second phone. Okay, but then why won't they let you send the second phone back? That's, that's... John, okay, Father... uh, Jesus, I'm going crazy. Deputy Doc, yep. can you call Consumer Cellular? Sure. Just the number he called and say, look, he sent the first phone back. The second phone doesn't work either. Just where does he send it back, for God's sakes? You're charging him 600 bucks for this. Hold on, Jim. I'm going to see if Doc can make a call real quick. But if not, I want you to take them to small claims court and sue their asses. And, and yeah. for breach of contract, they, the it's useless. Hold on. I'm Tom Martino. Put the doc on the case. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I want to get to this. I want to get Mark on, too. I didn't know how many more times he was going to go over the story. <laughs> we had a customer with a repair history. Of like, All right. John Fuller is a personal injury attorney. And what I say is, it's like a boutique firm. He will only take as many cases as he can personally work. Now, of course, he has assistants and paralegals and all that, but he wants each and every case under his purview. And what he does is he talks to each and every client. He gives them the cell phone number where they can call or text at any time. And he really loves that kind of arrangement. And so do his clients, who include, of course, Mark and Sue's major 
and other people that we know. So, John, I'm going to ask you straight up. Is bigger better? Are bigger firms that brag about how big they are better? And I know what your answer is, and I agree with you. I think, what's, what do you think? I really don't think so, Tom. The, the bottom line is that, you know, I talk to people all the time. I met a young lady this morning. This is what prompted the subject for today. She told me that she was in a really bad accident. She hired a big firm that I know and respect in town. And I said, how was the experience? You know, tell me about it. She said, the the lawyer that was assigned to my case left and went to work for another firm. I did not get a call for five months. She went through not one but three paralegals before the conclusion of her case. And so I I ask you, you know, if if service is important to you, if having the same people on the other end of the phone that that know who you are when you call, having the same attorney I'm not going anywhere in my own firm. If having all of that and that consistency and knowing that we know who you are and what's important about your case, if that's important to you, it's a no-brainer. We're going to win hands down in the service department 10 out of 10 times. And so I'd really encourage if you're thinking about bigger is better, you should also give us a call and, and experience the fuller law difference and then make the decision yourself. Absolutely took the words right out of my mouth. John Fuller, notice the difference. 303-597-4500. You can tell. 303-597-4500. Myaccidentlawyer.co. You know, when it comes to selection and pricing and trade-ins and service, that's what you want when you have an RV. Even if you buy a new one, you want to know you can trade it one day and get another or just sell it to them. And you want to know you can get it serviced. And you want to know that you have a company with a wide selection and a company with a national presence. That's LazyDays.com. Right here in Denver as well. LazyDays.com for your positive RV experience from service, sales, to warranties. LazyDays.com. So you got a client spent 20, 30 grand with you over the past two, three years, right? Wow. Comes in, Jesus God. Comes in. Oh, multiple and, uh, cars, maybe, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he thought he saw a deal where the oil change was $30 off, but he oh. was wrong. Do you give him the $30 or do you yeah. tell him to kick rock? If he's really, yeah. t- you that's, can tell if he's trying to put you together or the truth. You can tell. That's why Best Buy was wrong, even though they were right. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. That you say that, yeah. yeah. You know what? You're right. You're right about that. If, yeah. if you've been going there a lot and yeah, I was something... a gold member, had their 200 a year tech plus program, had their credit card, shut it all down. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's why uh, that's why big corporates, it's, it's just ruining everything. I feel like. Yeah. Oh, it's a shame. It's the idiot behind the register more than the, the corporate well, it is mentality. Too. They're yeah. not trained properly. And the They're young not... girl that was, you know, <laughs> called the police and was smiling and laughing there as I'm being trespassed. Yeah. She's there thinking she won, not realizing she lost, you yeah. know. That's the irony of, of her, like, oh, you know. Like, he just lost Is that a restraining order, like, though, that you have now? Or just, huh? Is that a restraining order you have now? No, it's a one-year trespass. Okay. Yeah. But might as well be lifetime. Yeah. I'll never go again. No, I wouldn't go back. Oh, no. I like telling the story, though. <laughs> <laughs> Live on YouTube. You get to honor in your old age, huh? I guess so, man. Yeah. Hate buying houses. It's just so emotional, you know. It um, is. Yeah. Are you looking for a home? We're. I wasn't looking, but a gorgeous home came up, and we call it the murder house. Oh no! Why? It's a, it's on an acre and a half up in Pinewood Springs, and it's 150 grand under market hmm. because the husband killed the wife and then killed himself. Oh Jesus! And so they can't sell it, and so we don't care. No, I, I even told either. the kids already. You I know? wouldn't even. I wouldn't care at all. Yeah. 
We'll bring good vibes to it. But I'm in that waiting for them to accept the contract. But and people it's like, really do. Advisors, TrajanWealth.com. 630 KHOW. An iHeart Radio station. Hi, Tom Martino, your troubleshooter. Janet, what's going on with you? Hello, Janet. Hi, um, Tom. Thank you for taking my call. Yeah. I'm just so frustrated. I've had, I have some leaky gutters on my home. It's a ranch style home. And I have water coming over the gutters, over the, you know, onto my. Now, uh, where, uh, here, that's what I wanted to ask you. When you say over the gutters, so do the gutters overflow? Yes. So it's not going behind the gutters and leaking straight down, right? If you if you stood under the gutters and looked behind the gutters toward your home, is there any leaking going on in that junction there? Yes. In the back, there is. As a matter of fact, I have a window well um, back there in the back, and I had to put a cover over it yeah. because the water... Who, how, old are those, how old are those gutters? Oh my gosh! Um, I've lived here for forty years. They're probably, uh, I'm probably thirty years old. Okay. But and what about your roof? I, Have you had your roof replaced? My roof does not. I had Excel come out and look at it, and he said I don't need a new roof for at least five to six years old. That's six wonderful, years. and they're very honest. Excel's a wonderful company. However, I need to ask um, this: Did he? Or she did the inspector at from Excel say anything about the junction where the gutters meet the roof? Sometimes there is no drip edge, or the drip edge deteriorated or fell off or got rotted, or it, sometimes that drip edge is a tile uh, is part of the shingle. Uh, yeah. Sometimes it is a aluminum piece. Do you have an adequate drip edge? I'm not sure. They Excel sent out a. a they looked shed. at the roof, but they may not have looked at the gutters. Did, did well, they, go ahead. This, this this kid that they sent out, he was a young man, and he just gave me a price for replacing the gutters and downspouts. He didn't even think about the pitch of them or. Well, no, 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 no. Know. In other words, he was because they okay. They do replace gutters, by the way, and they'll and if they do, they won't leak. Okay. Now, what size are your gutters? Are they four inch or five? I think they're four inch. Okay. So here's what I want to ask you. You say it leaks behind the gutter, but if you stand in front of the gutter, literally when it rains, does it, does the rain go in that gutter and fill up and spill over? It depends on where you're at. In the front, it does, but in the back, it's, it's seeping through. Have you had your gutters cleaned? Well, yes, I do it like eight times a season. I have trees and I okay. My so it's not it's not it's not plugged up, right? No, 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 no. Okay. And why and did so, and why did Excel give you a price on gutters? Well, I said I wanted gutters replaced. And okay. So, like I said, the young man did they say did they I, say from Excel that your gutters needed replacement? No. No, he just gave me a replacement bid. But I've had other companies come out, and they say, you just need to change the pitch. Of yeah, the but Excel Excel's not going to do a gutter repair, I don't think. I don't think they will. I, I think okay. that you I, would need, you need someone to repair. You might need to rehang the gutters you have. I don't know what condition they're in. Uh, are any of well, the gutters not. rotting or open or anything? No, 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 they're not. And that's my frustration. Um, the downspouts are small, so I'm thinking I need to get bitter, bigger downspouts. So all I want is a, you know, I, I want a, an estimate of what it's going to take to repitch, keep it, and, and there's gutters leaking, and then bigger downspouts. And I can't. What was the bid the for new gutters on your house? What was how much? About five thousand. About five. What kind? What size? Mm -hmm. What size is your house? What size is my house? Yeah, is it a well, big house? A big house? It's a, well, it's a ranch style. It's you know, it's not a small house, but it's not a big house. How many square feet? Um, probably eighteen hundred. That sounds That's expensive fun. to me for gutters. 
Um, um, she needs yeah. a handyman. Do you have a handyman on there? Yeah, thing? that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. But you need a handyman who knows what the hell they're doing with gutters. And exactly. you and if you want them rehung, I'm not here's what I'm at. I'm saying it might not be worth it. The labor might come close to new gutters if you get a real were these seamless gutters they quoted? Yes. They would extrude them on site. I guess I, you know, he really didn't. Okay. You, know, you young, obviously, I, you hold on. You obviously did not get enough information. Maybe you didn't ask or he didn't tell you. Do you have the name of the guy in the proposal? I'm going to call the owner of the company and find out. Okay. Well, let me look here. I've got All right, to hold on and give it to Kelly. That's what we need to do. I, I'm just going to call and talk to the horse's mouth. I'll just talk to Jay, the owner. I mean, to be honest with you, you you should have all those questions answered for you when they came to look at your house and gave you a bid. That why the gutters need replacing and where they're deficient or if they can be repaired and all of that should be there. So let me know who it was and we'll give Jay some really positive feedback. He's a great guy and it's a great company. We're going to talk to Mark coming up. We talked to everyone else and I'm going to, I think Ryan's still going to jump back in. And we'll uh, do that right after this. Twenty four hundred square feet, five bed, two bath. Um, two of the bedrooms are not really what I would call normal conforming bedrooms. How old a house is it? Um, seventies, seventies. Up the hill a little bit in Pinewood Springs, up above Lyons. It's it's a nice looking house. We really like it. Six hundred K. I mean everything's exploded. The numbers blow my mind. But yeah. yeah. It's not updated, you know. The updated ones are eight hundred K. Yeah. For for that. Would you before. update it? I probably would, yeah, we do that. We made hundred and thirty on our first one in two years. And then this one I have now, I've made two hundred and sixty barely doing anything over three years. That's 240 square foot. That's not a lot. No. But it's probably, like you said, by the time you get somebody out to pull them down and rehang them and do everything, you may as well just replace them. Especially you can upgrade to the five inch. Who's this? You know, um, if you're looking for an investment, you need an investment that you can trust. Now, there are all levels of investments, okay, all levels, but you need to start with safety. Now, you can move into other things, but at least start with safety and become the banker.org. That's also Joe Keanu and his team. They have some really conservative investments you can start with, like overfunding life insurance. And then they also have fixed indexed annuities. Both of them do not involve the stock market. They both involve guarantees and tax benefits that you need to know about. To find out more, go to becomethebanker.org or give them a call, 303-779-6600. You've heard me talk about Frank Duran, the real estate man, and the free market analysis he does of your house to see what it will sell for. You know, it used to be we stayed in our house a lifetime or maybe two houses in a lifetime. People are moving now three to five years. It's amazing. But if you're looking to sell for any reason or maybe just curious, Frank will do a complete analysis free of charge, detailed analysis with all elements taken into consideration. And there's no obligation. Give him a call, 303-920-1622. 303-920-1622. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. You see that on the wallpaper. Yeah. I think there's definitely money to be made on it. But I think this one will peak, though. What elevation is it? Um, I think high one's like 75, maybe. It's a little bit, yeah. We've lived at 89, so it's not the worst we've done. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's cool. Oh, thanks. Yeah. And it's like hot corn ceilings and I you know, know right? yeah. yeah. 
You think it's worth it, though? Huh? You think it's worth it these days? With... I don't know that market up there. That's yeah. the only thing. Well, well, Lions is expensive. And well, real estate's ten minutes stupid. up from Lions. Yeah, yeah. It has gotten ridiculous. Yeah. Because that when was when did the people, you know, um, last year in August. Okay, so I mean, That's by the time you get in and 50. you do a few things in three or four years, that that title will be gone. Yeah. The murder house. Yeah, yeah. We joke about it. I mean, you have to have some levity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We just we told think. my kids right away. Like, oh, yeah. I didn't want to, you know, they live there five years and then find out from a kid at school. I want them to be oh, ready yeah. with no, come, comebacks and everything, you know. That's never bothered me in any way. Yeah. My girlfriend's always feeling, you know, like family members are coming to visit and stuff at night. And yeah. It's like, stop. I, I'll tell I you what. I had a dream after my younger sister passed. And she took me to my mom's place in the dream. She wasn't there, but I could feel her presence. Sure. And then... um. In the end, me and my mom walk across the street to a flower garden my mom knew. So the next morning, I call her. I said, hey, I think Mary told me that, you know, she's coming to pick you up. You should be prepared, you know. And she goes, oh, no, 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 I'm fine. I'm going into surgery to get my heart thing removed. She didn't make it. Oof. Yeah. Wow. And, um, man, it was so powerful. So I, I definitely believe there's some yeah, stuff there. there's some connection, yeah. But, um. We fi I figure I'll have my, my minister go up with us and bless the house. And even we even thought about doing some of the Buddha stuff too. There's like sure. burn sage. Get it all done. You yeah, know, there's yeah. some hippies still up there. I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. I think we'll be fine. We had a. I felt like we had a spirit in our first mountain home. A little girl would run up and. No shit. We, we put a set of stairs into the house. We remodeled it. It didn't have any stairs. We put a set in in the in, inside, and she would run up and down those stairs. Come on. Yeah, like two, three months she ran up. I've never house. experienced anything like that. And I just, yeah. yeah. I know people who have. They swear to God. Yeah, well, my girlfriend's that way. I mean, yeah. yeah. I, I, I don't, you know, believe me or not, but it, it was real as could be. And yeah. that dream was phenomenal. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I mean, I even told my sister, and she's like, holy crap. So. What's that? Jacket in the trash can? Oh, Doc did that for me. I got to tell you. <laughs> got to be right. 88,000. It's two to four. It's Leland Conway. From moments of Biden and deep thoughts by Kamala Harris to sightings of Bigfoot and UFOs punctuated by the shenanigans of Twisted View on Fridays, Leland Conway has got you covered weekdays on 630 KHOW. Hi, it's Tom Martino, your troubleshooter. One clear choice garage doors for all your garage door needs. Everything from the opener to every part of the uh, door, the hinges, the uh, cables, the panels, everything, the rollers. And, and these people come 24-7 with emergencies, of course. They have battery backups, Wi-Fi enabled, uh, garage door openers, time to close features. They're really, really good. OneClearChoiceDoors.com for all of their prices as well. Now, we uh, are talking to Mark in Mexico. Mark's on vacation, but he was watching. It was funny. We were texting each other during the... Uh, during the uh, speech, you, you were pretty negative on old Biden there, man. Uh, negative? What are you talking about? I, I can bring up our. You were a negative, Nelly. Uh, by the way, I hold heard on. This John's wait, 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 uh, wait, wait, wait. I heard Father John's back from the dead. I know. I can't believe I said that. Listen to this. I say that I, this is what I texted you during the speech. You have to admit Biden is sounding great. He is on a roll. He will not only run, but he will win with a landslide. Now, I said that just to piss you off. And you said 
Yes, I know your thoughts, same as 2016. And I said, yeah. LOL. Then I said, then you said, keep thinking that way. And then I said, he is like the second coming of Christ because he kept talking about his accomplishments. He's the best. You know, actually, he was pretty fiery in that speech, what I do respect. Someone actually uh, pumped him up with vitamin D or cocaine or something, maybe a little meth on the side. So he actually came off like he understood stuff, but he did start falling a little bit in the last 20 minutes. What I don't like, in all honesty, is just the BS, man. You're right. He is the second coming of Christ, and everybody around him tells him that. He's a great politician. He's been a politician forever in a day. He's going to die a politician, right. uh, whether he's president or not. So, I mean, that's all he knows, and he's he is well-crafted at his craft. But do you still believe after that, because you said he is not going to be the next candidate? For... I don't think he's going to. we got a $500 bet on it. I don't think so. I don't think he's going to make it. Up to the election, I really honestly, don't. I you think someone's that. going I mean, to step in and take? Make... Someone's going to step in and take his place? I think so. Yeah, yeah too good a performance. Five hundred dollars. What do you no, think, I, I, Mark? I think he had too good a performance to lose it now. If he oh, would have fallen no apart, way, man. Big yeah. deal. you could. I could pump you up with cocaine, and you'd be fine. Well, why pump him up to drop him? Yeah, that's well, what I don't I'll understand. Tell you why? Because they don't know what they're going to do yet. They simply don't know. I mean, it's not if you OK, up. then who do you think they would get to run? God, I don't know, man. I have no idea. I simply don't think he's going to be physically fit to make it. I mean, my God. OK, you want to know what I really thought about last night? Yeah, he was feisty. He reminded me of the old guy that all of us remember. If you ever walked on his lawn, he would come out and yell at you. Like if you, you threw the football <laughs> in his yard or the tennis I ball. know. Get out, out of my yard. Don't come in my, in my yard. My yard, you little whippersnapper. That's who we watched last night. And there was nothing partisan about it. I mean, the guy, if Trump came out and did that at the State of the Union, and by the way, notice how the Republicans didn't tear any speeches up. But if Trump came out and spoke the way he did last night, it would be nothing but criticized. I mean, it would be, oh, my God, that was a campaign speech. That's not the State of the Union, blah, 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 blah. How about the fact he got that poor woman uh, who died, the college student, her name wrong? He, he basically called him some basketball coach. But he, but he also, he also called uh, Democrats, his own party is upset with him because he said, and, and she was killed by an illegal that. Yeah, I know, because you're not allowed to say that. That's how, you know what, I truly believe, looking at Biden when he was back in his, well, when did he start in politics? When he was eight. So if we went back to when he was eight years old, some of his speeches aligned with everything I believe in right now. It's pretty remarkable how far this guy has come. I want to know who the puppet master is in the background. I mean, I know Soros is throwing money around to these DAs and everything, but I truly want to know who the hell's running the country, because I don't know. And I've never seen anybody diss the entire Supreme Court. Well, actually, I take that back. I think Obama threw a little lob at him. But Biden just outright called them all out like that fashion of the government, because they don't agree with us and they interpret the Constitution different, uh, should be just shamed. I mean, it was ridiculous. Oh, cool. Hold but on a second. Hold, sure. hold on Once a second. Again, no wait, wait, listen, uh, Mark, Mark me on vacation, don't, don't, hang, don't hang up. Jane's got a comment. Go ahead, Jane. Hi. Hey, listen, isn't it interesting? I haven't heard anything about uh, the the uh, double standard. Here he is <clears throat> pumped up. Because, that's, because all you listen no, no, to wait is... Minute, wait, 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 let it, wait, Mark, wait. I, go ahead. It's a big deal. If I put my head in the sand, I won't hear anything oh, wait, from people. I don't, I don't even know what she's saying yet, Jane. I, I, I'm no, not disagree. Go ahead, Jane. Thank you. Huh. So anyway, yeah. he just got off of charges serious charges because he wasn't capable of being a standing trial you can't have it both ways come on what do you think did you think he did a good job i was surprised that he uh handled it himself ex yeah, ex yeah, except that he just said nothing but lies in propaganda it was a speech for trying to uh, run for president again it wasn't the, uh, you know, you bring up a good point, though. That special prosecutor says they didn't think he could withstand any charges or a trial. You know, Jane, 
Jade is actually very smart. The difference is, here's what happened. They didn't pump him up with meth and cocaine uh, before they sat him down with the DA. What they did, or I'm sorry, the Justice Department, they, they shot him up with a little heroin, is my, is my understanding. I don't think. I, I, do you really think he took anything last night to stay? Yes. To, you really yes. do? Absolutely. It, it absolute, absolute minimum, some kind of uh, Viagra or something. I don't know, something. I, I maybe vitamin B12, who knows? Um, but that doesn't give you instant. I don't know. Maybe a Red Bull. That would make well, a cool okay. Red how Bull you, commercial. How do you take the guy that the? Okay, exactly what to the callers say in Jay. How do you take the guy that's so uh, so stupid? Let's just say what it is. So dumb and senile that he can't uh, even sit in front of a jury because they're all going to say he's innocent because he's so stupid. No, and they didn't say, he didn't say stupid. He said a he, kindly gentleman with a bad memory. Yeah, he, whatever. You know what? And then how do you turn the kindly gentleman into the old man screaming at the kids into the yard? How the hell do you do that? It's got to be drugs. Anyway, we got to take a break. Thank you. Hold on. I'm Tom Martino. <laughs> You excited about this uh, election, huh? Hell no. no. I think it's the worst thing. No. I mean, I mean, you really talk about it. No, no. You got to talk about it. It's major. But yeah. here's the deal. I'm shocked and dismayed that they're the only two candidates we have. Yeah, that's it's slim pickings. I yeah. wish that they would both drop out. I really do. I think our country would be so better How off. Big a difference there would be a free for all, and people would come out of the woodwork. We want that fresh blood. How big a difference would it make if he if he had a ringer for vice president Trump? Well, because it doesn't matter. Trump now. I don't think Trump his politics are terrible. I don't really. I don't think he's full of hate and all that bullshit. I just think he he's an asshole. I don't think no, he's he, he's a dick. Yes. Yeah. I just don't think. But I don't think he has bad ideas. I don't think. I think Biden has very destructive ideas. Yeah, that's true. But. He's a but nicer, I'm just wondering how big Biden's a difference. a nicer person. Yes, by far. Genesis Total Exteriors says it all. Anything on the outside of the house, from the roofing down to the siding or stucco, windows and doors, decks, they can do it all. And they have that new smog-eating roof, a roof that actually converts the air around it, the pollutants around it, into harmless nitrogen gases that actually get washed into your soil with rains. It, it's such a remarkable product and great for the environment. GenesisTotalExteriors.com. Call for a bit of all your storm damage with one source to deal with, 303-679-8509-679-8509. Hey, The Art of Granite, they'll give you a price right now on the phone. All you have to do is call and tell them that you want a countertop. Tell them what you want. Give them some square footage, and you get a price. It's a wholesaler of materials and they only charge the regular price for fabrication and installation. Even tear out and haul away is free. 303-386-5919. Get your price. 303-386-5919. There's a special now going on at ZeroResDenver.com. If you're looking for spring cleaning, please call and Zero Res will do it. Now, they are running this special for March. So call early in the month. Get it done. And what they're doing, three rooms starting at 109 plus a free hallway and $75 off of duct cleaning. What do I love about Zero Res? I love their patented process for cleaning your carpets, both in the softened alkaline-based electrically charged water, which is the best cleaning agent in all of nature without any harmful chemicals or emulsifiers, plus their gentle but thorough scrubbing technique and your carpets don't use a lot of water with this technique, and they dry faster. You will love it. They stay clean longer. It's zero-fied, and that's what you want. ZeroResDenver.com, 303-471-5150. I just wonder if Trump can find a vice president that could kind of buffer him from. Yeah, that helps for sure. You know, um, who would he find? It would be nice if he could find a female. Well, who's the the governor from Hawaii? Because she's kind of independent now. Gabbert, is it? 
Really? Yeah. Oh, you mean for uh, for Trump? Yeah. She's younger, in her forties. Anyway, so oh, I got Tulsi uh, Gabbard. We were able to get in touch with Consumer Cellular. You were? Yes. What did they say? I'll tell you after. Okay. <laughs> Good. Excellent. I'm learning. Oh, we forgot. To, I wanted to ask Tom about that one car. I don't know. We'll have time for all that. We'll we'll get to it though. Let's see. Do we got a call or two? You know, every time I solve one of these problems, Tom doubles my salary. Oh yeah, I do. I double no it. question. I'll but double it without thinking about it. That, uh, so you can have two two Coca Colas this week. Is yeah, that, what you're that gets unaffordable pretty quickly. I know. Well, hey Tom, look Coke, at that. Coke Zero. Which one? I mean, you started a penny and double it for a oh, month. Oh yeah, yeah. I remember that. As a yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Somebody asked someone, "Would you rather have two million dollars right now, or a penny that doubles every day for the next thirty-one days?" A penny. That of course. Yeah, because. Because, you know, one to the 32nd power is much more than two million. But it's also compounded. Look, gold's already 2,100 an ounce. Yep. I mean, like you said, that's where I would buy it from. You should look at these guys paying a lottery with um, stocks and bonds, doing the short puts or calls and stuff. By Biden last night, plus Ashley Moody, the Florida AG, and John Lott, gun expert on the Joe Pag Show. Tonight from 6 to 9 on 630 KHOW, Denver's talk station. Hi, Tom Martino here. Uh, Paul, what's your comment? Go ahead, Paul. Welcome to the show. Hey, Tom. I wanted to ask you folks if there's something I'm missing in terms of an advantage or disadvantage uh, regarding a resident such as myself who lives in Colorado as Colorado driver's license and autos currently registered in Colorado, uh, new autos, um, re-registering, retitling him and registering him in a state like South Dakota where it's a whole lot cheaper to register them. Okay, if you do that, if you register a vehicle in another state where you do not have a residence or you're not legally present there and you stay here most of the time you could be sought after by the colorado department of revenue and fined for that well i called colorado dmv and treasurer and they say it's not illegal at all i told them i'm not trying to do anything illegal by the way so by the way it, it is okay it, it is. Uh, it, I, when you say not illegal, it is not illegal to register in another state where you have a residency if you're it back and forth. That, there's nothing wrong no, with that. But, I'm but, not t- I, I told them I live in Colorado. I do not have any business. In, I, I call Colorado. And I told them I live here. I've lived here for decades. I have nothing to do with South Dakota. Am I legally able to register my vehicles there, and they said yes. Well, you're not, okay? Uh, in fact, South Dakota won't let you register it there. South you would- Dakota does. They have a non-resident titling and registration, and they have for years, and starting July 1st of this year, they're increasing the fee for titling it, not the registration, for titling it, to $100 for non-residents, but they have a non-residential... Okay, okay, I didn't know anything. First of all, I apologize. I, honest to God, never heard of a non-resident registration. But if they have that, what I'm telling you is, in Colorado, if you have a a vehicle registered outside the state and they document that you're here more than 30 days, 
they can come after you. I'm telling you, they can. And also, if you get stopped by a cop and you have your license with a Colorado address and Wyoming yeah. registration, what, what, what they're going to give you a ticket. What address do you give? It's not Wyoming. What address do you give in South Dakota? I would give my Colorado address. Both I, I've never heard. You know what? You bring up a. You know what, Paul? I love that you're bringing this up because on this show, it's all about learning. And if truly what you're saying is true, I don't think Colorado will have another car ever register here. Why would I register my BMW X7? Why would I register it here costing thousands of dollars when I can go to South Dakota and do it? Why would I do well, it? Well, listen, so here's information about the, the, the uh, increase in fees. So uh, South Dakota just passed the bill, SB, I think it's 112, to increase the titling fees for non-residents to $100. So I don't care. $100 already, is pennies. I, I tell you, I, I'm just talking about, the, I understand that. That's for in, that's an increase in non-resident titling fee. The registration, they told me this morning, for my 5,000-pound or just under 5,000-pound new vehicle, would be about $108 to register a vehicle in South Dakota. And Colorado this morning told me, because I'm trying to do this legally, Colorado told me after I told them I live here, I have nothing to do there, said it's perfectly legal. South Dakota would control. It's right on their other... website, right on DMV website, dude. You, you got to look it up. You right better here. double check that. Right here. I got, I, listen, man, Paul. Please leave your number with Kachina. I swear to God, I want to do this on Monday. I want to research it. Hold on. All right. By the way, um, DenverRegen.com for semaglutide in a compounded method for 250 250 a month for weight loss. Follow Tom Martino at Real Tom Martino and stay connected with all of us at 630 KHOW, KHOW.com, and on the iHeartRadio app. Leland Conway is next on Denver's talk station, 630 KHOW. Mandy Connell here with the Legal Minute from my friends at Bell & Pollock. Listen for more great advice on the Bell & Pollock Injury Show Saturdays at 10 on KOA. Hi, I'm Gary Bell of the law firm of Bell & Pollock. We are injury attorneys and this is your Legal Minute. You're in an accident. You get out to exchange information like you're supposed to do. The other driver says, you know, I don't even have a driver's license. I'm sorry. I don't even have any insurance. I'm sorry. What are you going to do? Is there anything that you can do? Yes. You can call Bell and Pollock at 303-795-5900. But know this right now. If a driver gets out and they do not have a driver's license, that does not mean automatically that it's an uninsured event. Insurance coverage could very well apply to pay your lost wages, to pay your medical bills, to pay you for your injuries. We can help you. Gary Bell, Brad Pollock, Bell and Pollock, championsofthepeople.com. Give us a call. We'll help you. Get more information or help from Bell and Pollock at championsofthepeople.com. Standing up for what's right. Helping out when things go wrong. Seeking the truth and speaking our minds. Not just making records, but breaking them. Leading the way behind the camera beyond the runway and on the silver screen not just making our mark but making a difference now that's a job for a girl scout girl scouts preparing girls for a lifetime of leadership krfx hd2 denver khow denver and iheart radio station listen on the free iheart radio app for all your music radio and podcasts free never sounded so good ABC News, I'm Michelle Franzen. Following his State of the Union address, President Biden is campaigning in Pennsylvania today. He spoke to reporters before leaving the White House about his announcement last night to build a temporary shipping port off the Gaza coast. President, who is going to provide security for the port you're planning to build to offer aid to Gaza? Is it really? going to be the idea? The president also says Israel's prime minister needs to do more to get aid into Gaza through border crossings. The Pentagon says the U.S. did not injure anyone with its aid drop Friday in Gaza. Hamas health officials claimed five children were killed. The Pentagon says it confirmed all aid bundles landed safely on the ground. The former president of Honduras, Juan Orlando Hernandez, was convicted by a federal jury today in New York on charges he conspired with drug traffickers and used his military and national police force.